and we're live. Hey, everyone, how you doing? Got a full house tonight. Yep. We have uh, Mr. Taylor has returned from uh, being under the weather. I hope both you and Katie are doing better. Yeah, the whole family had strep throat. Oh, yeah, I, I don't recommend that at all. No, when you got no. a five year old in the house, cooties run rampant. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, since we're starting with you, let's go ahead and uh, you let people know who you is and uh, what you do. Uh, Dan Leon Taylor. I am a writer of sorts. Uh, I've done everything from comic books to copywriting for television promotion to role playing games. All right. I got to be faster with these banners. All right. Let's go ahead and pop up to Rosalinda. Remind Hi. folks about you. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Rosalinda. I'm a uh, women's fiction author, everything from contemporary women's fiction to sweet romance, and shortly, hopefully within this next year, a uh, new YA series. All right. Mr. Goggin, I don't have a banner for you, but I'll let you tell people who you is and what you do. That's all fine. Um, my name's Andrew Goggin, and I'm a assistant editor for Action Figure Times, an online magazine for uh, collectibles and action figures since 94 as well as writing movie reviews that have been published on Ain't It Cool News and screenwriting as well as looking for that paycheck. Well, I think we're all looking for that paycheck, aren't we? All right. Uh, myself, uh, I'm Dan Wickline uh, and uh, writer, editor, whatever they pay me to do. And uh, let me go ahead and plug one thing I got coming up this week. On Tuesday night, I will be on the new uh, comic book, comic shop experience, which mm -hmm. is a, um, a live broadcast that's being done just about every night of the week now to highlight comic shops and new stores that are, you know, the stores and new books coming out. And I will be on the show with Nick Barucci of Dynamite Entertainment talking about the new book shipping on Wednesday. So Tuesday night, we'll go over what the new books are and uh, give you an idea of what you should be looking for in the shop. So check out the comic book shop experience, uh, also known as the EXP. Uh, check it out on YouTube, on Facebook. Uh, they have a lot of good programming. A lot of different stores are on there doing sales and stuff. So it's a good place to check out. So now that I've done business. Okay. We are going to get into this first thing. Uh, were you guys all watching the Super Bowl? No. Yeah. Sort of. Sort of. This has got to be the first year in a long time that I really didn't care. Oh, I never care. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm I'm actually a football fan. I root for the Carolina Panthers. Okay. Um, you know, to the point I actually, as Dan knows, snuck it snuck it into a comic that he was editing for me, uh, a Super Bowl game. I did my best to edit it out. <laughs> yeah, but it stayed in. So <laughs> I went full on Black Sunday with a, uh, 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 uh exploding dirigible in a zombie filled Super Bowl. So, as one does. Awesome. Yes. Or should we just refer to it as the big game? I'm not sure if we're allowed to say the word, but, uh, is it copywritten? Big game? Yes. It, it is. I don't okay. think you can have an imprint. Not Gil's on, but he's also, oh, he's dueling. He's watching us and the Super Bowl. I think that's a good choice. Yeah. Yep. Uh, most of us here are actually older than Tom Brady, which is pretty bad, but okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I'm, I'm not a Tom Brady fan, hence why I'm not watching it this year. I'm, I have to admit, I'm, I'm from Massachusetts and in Boston, but when it comes to it, I only care about it when they went to the bowl. I, I always have the joke of having the fair weather fan jacket. If my team isn't in, I don't care. And I barely care when they are in. I always thought it'd be neat to make a hat called the fair weather fan that had a dot where the little thing on the top was a dial and inside the hat was all the team logos. So you just keep turning it till you get the team you need that day. That's good. Yep. Somebody definitely should work on that. Okay. <laughs> well, as you know, the commercials and the trailers are usually the big things that uh, come out of the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of them that dropped is, of course, the Falcon and Winter Soldier trailer. And uh, I thought we'd uh, go over it real quick. It's only a two-minute trailer, but I thought since there's a good chance that'll be the next big show for us to cover starting in March. 
So uh, if anybody who's not familiar with the characters, they come out of the Captain America universe. Uh, Winter Soldier is, of course, his old friend Bucky from the World War II era. Kristen's on with us. Wanted to say hi to, to her buddy Goggin. Hi, Crookie. Yeah. So we're going to go over this video real quick. But, of course, Bucky from uh, Cap's early days and, of course, was the Winter Soldier in Captain America Winter Soldier. And the Falcon, of course, is Captain America's other best friend. So if you've watched any of the Avengers movie or Captain America movies where they're both in it, the two of them fighting is one of the best things in it. So they argue like a married couple. And I believe in the trailer they actually go to couples counseling. So this will be the first time I try to actually bring uh, this in. Okay. Hopefully you guys will see this or it's going to make no sense at all. I have no audio. Same. Yeah, I didn't think there would be an audio. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be the first place I stop. This is a lot of people talking about with the, the big reveal in this week's uh, WandaVision of the character at the end, which we'll get to, is the introduction of mutants. This is another major part. This is the city of Madripoor which is a huge part of the X-Men universe and the mutants. Really? Yeah, so this is supposed to be Madripoor. Okay. So I think that's going to be a big uh, big thing for the comics, to, or for the movies to establish that city. Plus, we saw what they did with Sokovia years ago. So with Madripoor, they can do anything they want with it. By the way, did we catch the, the, call, uh, the callback from the beginning with uh, uh, Falcon... Just stepping outside of the plane like Cap did in Winter yep, Soldier. Jump, yeah, from uh, yeah, Winter Soldier where he just jumps out of the airplane. Yeah. I realize Rosalinda's looking at us like I have none of the, no reference for any of this. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it. Okay, the guy, mask. Yeah, the guy there is Baron Zemo, or well, I don't know if they ever referred to him as Baron. No. But he's uh, Helmut Zemo from uh, Winter Soldier, the guy that put the Avengers against each other, or from Civil War. And he is a huge Captain America villain, probably one of the biggest, like Red Skull Zemo. Yep. So, and he, they're actually bringing his red mask, his uh, purple mask in, which is pretty good because normally they kind of shy away from uh, cost the costumes and authentic looking. So it's kind well, of cool to see that. Well, there is COVID, and we're all should wear a mask anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's a – and you'll notice the bad guys all wear masks in here as well. So are they really bad guys, or are they good guys? Um, because they wear masks. Yeah, good oh. point. Yeah, yeah. By the way, for those who don't know, this actress here is from the Solo movie. She played – I'll never get the name right – Ephrus Nest? Yep. Okay. So if you guys have seen Solo, this is her coming back, uh, you know, in and nice. staying now, with the that, Disney family. Now, is that the hand? Um, I don't know if it's the hand or if it's Flag Smashers is what I've heard. Okay. I was also wondering, I know that they've, uh, I think they've established that uh, Zemo has no family. So I was thinking, for some reason, I thought there was Zemo's daughter. That could also be. Yeah. Or is it, well... Yeah, see, that's a good point, because his family is killed, and that's his motivation. Mm -hmm. So maybe his daughter lived, or they didn't know. Or maybe they're adapting it for this and being it more towards an adopt. Maybe she's a, an adopted Sokovian. It's, it's hard to say. Yeah, could be. All right. And of course, at the end of uh, Infinity War or Endgame, Cap gave Falcon the shield, which is something established in the comics. Falcon does become Captain America, but so does Bucky at one point. So, I think I was Captain America for a weekend. You were. I remember that. Yeah. 
Yeah, the beard coming out of the mask was the different way. Yeah, <laughs> had to give it up. Yep. So, well, you know, you get older, your back starts to go. You start throwing that shield. Yeah. And for those who recognize, don't recognize her, that's Sharon Carter from the uh, uh, Winter Soldier movie as well. She is Peggy Carter's niece, I believe. I keep looking at Andrew because he's you know, helping me out here. <laughs> <laughs> and she was actually Civil War. Actually, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. It was Winter Soldier and Civil War. Yeah. My apologies. Yeah. She was the babysitter in, uh, in Winter Soldier, the one that lived next door to him. Yeah. So, and Cap's uh, love interest for two minutes. Yeah, yeah, he does kiss her, and then you go. That's that's Peggy's uh, niece. That's really weird. But then, of course, we got a, a woman and a dead robot in the other series, so they don't seem to care. Yeah. Okay, now hold on. This commercial that ran during the Super Bowl has its own halftime. Yep. Yes, it does. <laughs> okay. It has its own halftime during this. Yes. <laughs> But you'll also notice that it's definitely not the Super Bowl because there's no Super Bowl with this much open space in the stadium. Right. <laughs> so they couldn't even get they couldn't even get him into a Super Bowl. So wait, before you start it, I, I do have the question. Obviously, that that is neither that's not Bucky or, or uh, Sam. That, yeah, that is U.S. Agent Johnny Wa John Walker, who in the comics is Nomad. No, no, he was actually uh, U.S. agent. Okay, and uh, started off as Super Patriot, was pretty insane. Like, if if Captain America decided killing people is a good thing, that's U.S. agent. But it also brings the question of they haven't really introduced the. I mean, I, obviously they've cast an actor, but they haven't shown him in any of the footage or trailers. They've uh, there's some still shots of him. He's he's popped up a little bit. Usually it's this scene that they show. Uh -huh. So. Um, uh, when, when we're done with this, I'll see if I can find a still shot and get you the name of the guy. Okay, this is quite the high level of action for a TV show. Very much. Yeah, I mean, I, and in the earlier trailers, when we see the flying through the canyon, again, that doesn't feel like a TV show, which is the one of the things I think is great about Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a heavy amount of stunt work for a TV show. Yes, it is. <laughs> now they're gonna kiss. They're doing a staring contest. Yes. Yep. That's that's pretty much like if. Uh, Dan and I were sitting next to each other at a convention. Yeah. <laughs> which we did once, and it was that way. All right. Let's go back to the other format. So that's that's probably going to be the next thing we cover, or at least we'll we'll definitely be covering it. How what else is on at that time will will dictate how much time it gets in the show. But it looks pretty in, intense. What do you guys think? What's your takeaway from it? Go with uh, start with Dan. Um, it looks looks like you said, it looks like it's a big deal for a TV show, but then after watching WandaVision, I would expect nothing less. So um I'm always with these Disney plus Marvel shows, I've been somewhat skeptical. But WandaVision's won me over, so I'm less skeptical about this one. Now, I could I could definitely see that. How about you, Andrew? What's your takeaway from that? Oh, I'm I'm looking forward to it as pretty much Winter Soldier is my favorite of the movies that have come from Marvel, and I think they're really obviously investing a lot into it, uh, and as well as doing the focus on the interaction between Sam and Bucky, which I think is another important part to balance it. Fair enough. Uh, Rosalinda, did you come away with any thoughts on that? I. <laughs> 
I believe when it popped up during the uh, Super Bowl commercials, and I was like, it caught my attention. I saw the whole thing. I thought first it was gonna be a movie, and then it's a Disney Plus, and I was like, oh, something else we're gonna talk about. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it'll be something to talk about once WandaVision's over, right? There you go. Yeah. Okay, the actor's name who's playing uh, um, John Walker is... Let me share that up on the screen real quick. Is uh, Wyatt... What? Oh. Wyatt Russell. Oh, Kurt Russell's son. Kurt Russell's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't make that connection. But yeah, so that's him. They, they've they've released these uh, still shots of him before, so you can see the uniform is definitely not the same as Caps, mm -hmm. but designed to be similar. So, so fun side note, um, I had uh, a long, somewhat argumentative conversation with Captain America at Disneyland. I told him that he was Captain Puerto Rico because um, of his outfit. <laughs> One star. Yep. I, I, I know I know that argument. So, fun fact. <laughs> Not wrong. Yeah, I, I assume he wasn't uh, very responsive to that, huh? He wasn't thrilled. I, I also <laughs> maybe told him it was on his cape, and he asked me, and he told me, well, he said something like, "I wear a cape," and I was like, "Yeah, dude, it's your cape." So, you know, <laughs> that's her. All right, we got a question from uh, our uh, our listeners or. I don't know what we're showing them, but uh, Lennon Poole says, what's your guys' thoughts on the possible cameo of Daredevil in Spider-Man 3? Because I don't have a clue how that could happen. Now, uh, one of you want to jump on that, or what do, you, what do you think? I have no clue on how they do any cameo in these Marvel movies, so anything's possible. Uh, there's so many, so many characters come out of left field are, you know, pop up or surprising that, you know, they can just, you know, pass him swinging by and he'll be part of the part of what's going on. Yeah. Andrew, do you want to jump in on that? Um, yeah, absolutely. There, I think there could be an interesting mincing of words. It's very possible they could bring in Matt Murdock, not Daredevil, right. at least initially, because based off of the events at the post-credit sequence for the last Spider-Man movie, I wouldn't be surprised that since they've outed Spider-Man's identity, lawsuits at the minimums come up after him for property damage. Uh, you know. okay. uh, Lennon just added, and uh, this is going to be a clarification. He says, because if I'm not wrong, did he not die at the end of the Defenders? And no, technically he didn't. Uh, in the show, the Defenders ends with him appearing to be dead. But then there's season three of Daredevil, which shows that he did get out and is in recovers with his uh, mother, who is a nun at the monastery or at the church. So it's all about him recovering and um, getting back. And he ends up taking on a uh, bullseye in the third season. So if you haven't seen the third season of uh, Dare Daredevil on Netflix, it's well worth watching. They bring in D'Onofrio comes back as Kingpin and uh, they introduce uh, bullseye. And it is probably... It's much better than the second season. So I'd go one, three, two in the order. And it's definitely worth watching. How they bring him back, I mean, the fact that at the end of uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, uh, Spider-Man's outed by J. Jonah Jameson means that Spidey's probably going to have some legal trouble. So, yeah, bringing in Matt Murdock is, you know, the best lawyer in Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, that's probably a good call. And the Netflix uh, series were always meant to be part of the MCU when they were created, but they were like, you know, the kid brother that they never wanted to bring to the party. So the, uh, you know, the Netflix shows always referred to the Captain America and stuff in, in fun little terms and the event. If, if the Netflix shows were the kid brother they didn't want to bring to the party, what does that make she Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D.? S.H.I.E.L.D.'s the Cousin Oliver. Okay. Oh. <laughs> But it what that they weren't at one point. I mean, they the fact that Agents of Shield at one point directly tied into the events off of um, yeah uh, off of Winter Soldier, of Winter is, Soldier, is and then also and, Dark World. Correct. But yeah, unfortunately, I, I I keep hearing it's a it was a behind the scenes issue, not a story issue. Yeah, 
there was a lot of stuff between Jeff Loeb, who was running Marvel Television, and uh, Kevin Fahey, who was running Marvel Studio, and Ron Perlman, the owner of Mar or Big Wig at Marvel, the owner of Marvel. And there was a lot of a pull back and forth. And finally, what happened is the Marvel Studios did so well that eventually Disney moved Jeff Loeb out and dissolved Marvel Television and moved it all under Kevin Fahey to the point now Kevin Fahey is actually in charge of the comics as well. But I don't know how much he's actually trying to run the comic side too. Mm -hmm. One last thing from Lennon. He says he thinks the best way for Daredevil to come in is in She-Hulk with a fight in court between the two. Absolutely agree. I think that would be a great <laughs> use of the character. You know, so courtroom drama, and he's the other big lawyer in the MCU. So I could see that happening. But I think um, we'll see uh, the third Spider-Man movie probably before the She-Hulk series. So I think, you know, we might get him in both. And, yeah. hey, I, I'm a huge fan of Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock. Daredevil is my favorite Marvel character. So I'm, I'm in fully on that one. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and move on to WandaVision. Which I know excites Rosalinda now. She can go. I can talk. I can get involved. <laughs> I have things to say. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So we'll start off with on a very special episode, which was the title of the episode. Uh, first thing I want to bring up is, um, and I don't know how many people caught this in the last last time on Wandavision section. There's a line change when they're showing everything that happened. Vision comes in the room, Wanda's standing in front of the crib, and he goes, where's Geraldine? And she says, oh, she left. And in the actual episodes, she said she had to rush home. In this episode, in episode five, she says she didn't belong here. Hmm. And I don't know why they made that change, but it seems kind of important. Well, Wanda obviously has control of our television sets and Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> True, and and they've they've proved with the Mandalorian they can actually uh, make changes after they start airing it with the fixing of the guy in the jeans, which upset me because I thought jeans guy was going to be the next big thing, like the coffee <laughs> cup in uh, uh, Game of Thrones. Game, Game of, of Thrones, Thrones, yeah. So. But yeah, so I noticed that. Okay. So okay, so I, let's let's get right into the episode. What were your guys' just just your overview without getting too deep? Let's just kind of what is your big takeaway from it coming off of episode four, going into the series? Rosalinda, go ahead. What you what do you what you what was your takeaway from the episode? Just okay. Well. Um... I like more than I thought it would. I like the meshing of the two worlds. So whereas I was so all in for the sitcom uh, and then was upset when we went back into regular re reality. Um, I did like that. We, we moved back and forth between the two. It adds a lot more dimension. Um, as for one division, the in Wonderland, what are we going to call it? What? Yeah. The anom oh, they, they call it the Maximoff anomaly or the hex. The hex. Oh, the hex. I like the hex. Yeah, Dark we'll go with the hex. The hex is cool. We're we're gonna be cool people and we're gonna use that word. So the <laughs> hex. Um, yeah. So it, it's interesting to me how Vision seems to be very much out of her control. So I, it, that piqued my interest in terms of like what is happening with Vision. Like, how is he there? How is he? animated considering what I've heard that he is no longer living. Um, and then there's other things I don't understand about the stones. I did see that Avengers movie about the stones and the guy and whatnot. Uh, I cannot find the words, but um, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah, Thanos and the infinity stones. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, Apparently, Wanda had an Infinity Stone, or that's how she was created, or something. And then, right. and then Vision needed an Infinity Stone. So I don't know. So I'm curious to like, did which was she able to capture an Infinity Stone again, or was I don't know. So anyway, so Vision seems to be doing things on his own and not playing according to Wanda's 
uh, rules. And I don't know how I feel about that. I feel very sympathetic towards Wanda and her grief and her wanting to do things her way. And it kind of bothers me that people are trying to mess her up. Like it does. That's All how right. I feel. How about you, Dan? Yeah, we uh, didn't have you with us last week. So what's well, your feeling yeah. on the series as we go? Um, I'm digging all the stuff that's happening outside of the hex. As much as I love the uh, sitcom stuff, you know, from the 50s and 60s and stuff beforehand. Um, and it did a good job setting up that Wanda is, you know, created her own, you know, fantasy world, so to speak. Um, now that seems very much like an experiment and let's see what we can write and let's just, you know, do different styles and stuff like that. And it's come off, you know, surprising because, I mean, they didn't show us a lot of, or any of the real world stuff in the promos for WandaVision, if I remember correctly. Um, but I'm much more interested in what's happening in the real world because that ties in directly to the MCU as compared to Wanda's, you know, hex happenings. But so this one, I mean, this episode was the longest episode yet, too. So 43 minutes or something like that. So it was almost a two-parter. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very special episode. Yeah. And, I, and, and, you know, having watched a lot of 80s television, I, I believe that it was. And I think I did learn a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew, you're our newcomer tonight. Um, well, it, it's kind of hard because I keep trying to go into an idea. I'm like, no, no, that's farther into the episode. It's, I think it's interesting to see how the progression of the eras from the sitcoms are playing more and more into it. Like the complexity of the stories are almost messing with the control. Yeah. Ooh. You know, uh, I mean, tr truly, I think it's by the time you get to the end of the episode, well, uh, the episode within the episodes, um, you really get the idea that there's somebody else playing off of Wanda. There, because I don't, I don't think. Well, again, I'm jumping very far ahead. But what happens with the kids and their and their new pet? I don't right. think that's something. I do not think that's something Wando planned. Yeah. Yes, but and we'll get to it. But is that something a third party is doing? That's something one of the kids is doing. But why? No, I think I think it's a third party because it also plays into right when you come in and you have. Um, Agnes come in and we have the flubbed line. Yeah. And then the, do you want to go which, back to the top? Right. Which we're going to get to in just a second. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, following on Dan's uh, comment about uh, liking the, um, the sword world or the real world mm -hmm. um, there, there of course, after episode four, there was a bunch of people posting, Hey, we want an X-Files uh, version, uh, X-Files show with Jimmy Woo and Darcy. Or Jimmy Woo, Darcy, and uh, Monica, and I'll admit I was one of the people that tweeted that out uh, yeah. immediately after the show. Like, I would totally watch that show. Well, it turns out a writer named Stephen Ford uh, decided to take that idea a little more seriously, and according to his uh, Twitter account, the he talked to his agent and stuff like that, and he actually has a, uh, a meeting with Marvel coming up this week to pitch such an idea. So he nice. ran with it enough. He's supposed to be writing the full pitch this weekend and is going to be presenting it to Marvel next week. Now, will it happen? Who knows? It could just be they want to, you know, give the guy a shot, see what talent he's got, and then maybe use him for something else. Who knows? Yeah. But it's neat to see that, you know, someone is actually jumping on that idea and trying to do something with it because I think a, a Jimmy Woo series would be pretty pretty damn fun. Now, what, is it a TV series or is it a comic book series? TV series. He's got a meeting with Marvel Studios. Okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, I like story the, in the comic. <laughs> That's true. Of course, Jimmy Woo is from uh, Agents of Atlas in the comics. Mm -hmm. So that could be yeah. interesting as well. So, all right, we are going to move on to uh, the topic of Agnes and Leon uh, Lennon. Is it? It's Lennon, right? L e n n o n. Yep. Lennon, like John Lennon. Okay. Uh, did you notice how Agnes went off script? The babies went silent, but when she went back on script, they were crying again. So that's why I think they aren't real. Well, that's an interesting point. I didn't realize the kids had stopped crying 
Yeah, good, good catch there, Lennon. Yeah, because she was, she like paused and goes, should we take it again? And it's just kind of yeah. standing there. And they're right, the babies are not crying. And she's they're just waiting for Wanda to, like, almost like a director. She's looking at Wanda like, yeah. hey, give me some, give me some direction here. Are we going to go again? We're just going to keep going. Well, it seems like Vision went off script. Like she was yes. supposed to come in and take care of the kids. And Vision's like, wait, no, no, no. And yeah. So that's what I think screwed it up. But yeah. Yeah. so what do you guys think Agnes's connection at this point? Because, I mean, we saw it last week or the previous week with her and uh, Herb, Herb outside talking, you know, and how she didn't want to, you know, don't tell him. And, that we are. and her, yeah. And the fact that she recognized that Geraldine wasn't part of the community. Mm hmm. So, well, I don't think she's a hostage like other no people are. What about Herb? Is Herb a hostage? Herb, Herb. My theory is that Herb's a hostage. It's just that when Wanda's distracted, her power over everybody dissipates. Okay. So Herb could snap out of it some at that point. And at that point that he does that is when she's dealing with giving birth. And her powers are going awry, and she yeah. might not have. She might have, have limited focus on what she can control. Yeah, just like earlier when she was having the contractions, and he started cutting through the fence. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think his his spurts outside of a uh, normal or his return to normalcy at points, uh, all coincide with her having some serious issues. So, but I don't know. Anybody else got some thoughts on that? With especially with Agnes. I mean, we all we all know the thought that Agnes is actually Agatha Harkness, the witch who, in the comics, trained Scarlet Witch with her powers, with um, Wanda with her powers. But yeah, you know, we don't know for sure that that's what's going on. Um, question: Is that person also deceased? No. Or, okay. Did Wanda like her? Like yeah, she was actually the, in the comics. She was the nanny for the babies. Oh. And, and also was part of what, part of help making the babies happen. Okay. In that, yeah, there's a. Okay. okay. It's almost better you robot. don't know what happens in the comics. Okay. <laughs> kind of. It's fine. Vision's a robot, and I understand that that's weird. Enough said. Um, yeah. Well, it's interesting because she wants to help quiet the babies. And if she, in the comics, was the person that helped bring them about and was the nanny, then that makes sense for her to be that person. But Vision did not seem okay with her right. taking care of the babies. So. Yeah. And that could have just been, you know, the worried dad thing. Could be. You know, overprotective father. I mean, Dan, you're you're a father now. Is did that strike you as something a dad would do or is that something more? Um no, he's very he's very concerned about his his kids and even though that they're you know age rapidly and even though they came about abruptly i think he definitely has a you know father instincts but he may be because you know vision being that he is vision it may very well be he's manifesting himself you know forcingly manifesting themselves to play the father role hmm. okay almost like how data would in star trek yeah yeah, create an algorithm to see how he's supposed to act as a father. <laughs> yeah. Though in the comics, he has human brain patterns that are given to him. He doesn't have that in in the MCU. So, the, yeah. Okay. Um, her powers don't work on the kids. She can't make them go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Or do much of anything else. Yeah, and they age themselves up. <laughs> now, great. again, going back to the comics, her kids become the characters Wiccan and Speed, where Speed has super speed like Quicksilver, and Wiccan has pretty similar powers to Wanda. So is it possible that he, the, you know, the, the kid is the one doing it, even at that young age? And if so, could he be the reason why the stork came to life in the first place and the butterflies and uh, why, why she couldn't get rid of the stork? I mean, that makes perfect sense. 
unless there's a third party also controlling things. Yeah, third party is definitely a possibility. Yeah. So what, about, what do you guys think? What do you, well, what's going on with those kids? If there is a third party involved, they are, I believe they are definitely in control of the children. You know, without Wanda or Vision having any control in them at all. Okay. I mean, go, kind of going off on a side element with it, it's very possible that if these are not real and are part of the construct that she's built, they would, and it's something that she can't control. It could be an issue of something, somebody who wants them as a source of power, similar to, similar to what Wanda has yeah. based off the Infinity Stone. Yeah. Oh, and to answer your question from earlier, uh, or your comment from earlier, Rosalinda, uh, Wanda, we're not sure if Wanda was given the powers by the Mind Stone or if her powers were unleashed by the Mind Stone. Okay. That, but the Mind Stone was used by uh, um, Struck, Baron Strucker. Uh, but also, and then the Vision actually had the Mind Stone in his forehead. So it was the same stone. Okay. Oh, ooh, interesting. Um, also, I don't remember what episode it was. Maybe episode... What are we in episode five? Uh -huh. Five. So maybe episode three, where there's that, where's that weird break, and she sees him, and he doesn't have a stone, and right. his are, are white. Yes. Um, I don't really know what the rest of my point was, but <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, that was disturbing. I, I, everybody I know jumped at that. D Dan, you weren't here uh, last week. Did you? Uh, did you have that shock moment? I, when I saw that, I go, oh, now they're bringing Marvel Zombies in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they're going to do that in What If, not a, okay. not WandaVision. But we're going to get it. We're going to get one, uh, Marvel Zombies. At the Super Bowl. Uh, oh. I like that. Yeah. Okay. The opening credits. It, it seemed to be a combination of family ties and growing pains and a yep. little bit of full house with the running across the park. Yep. Okay. I, I'm, I guess maybe a little full house. I, I, I landed on growing pains because of the framed family photo and the pictures, because that yeah. was the growing pain sequence with what the painting was, the painting was family ties. Was yeah, family that was, ties? yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That's okay. what I got as well. Then I'm lying. And I mean, family no. ties because it's been a while since I've seen them. It's all right. It was the eighties. We don't all yeah. really remember it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Family ties then. What is it? But did, didn't Growing Pains do the pictures? Yes, Growing yeah. Pains did the pictures. Okay, so so that's where I'm getting. So started. the actual painting that's being done, With and family. instead of a hand, it's actually Wanda's power is doing it. Right. Yep. But that's that's family ties. Okay. There were the the pictures that of showing them growing up is yeah. Growing Pains, right. and okay. then them in the park and running and having a little picnic is was from the um, family or from a uh, Full House. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna fight me on that one. I can see I'm it. I'm gonna fight you on the on the full house one. I don't feel I don't I didn't feel a full house on this one at all, really. I, I, I can't I would agree with Rosalinda, if only for the fact of I think we're gonna get into the nineties. Yeah, because full house was nineties. Yeah. I mean, hey, I'm not I'm I'm not gonna argue with you now. I will admit that I am pulling this from uh comments on the internet. That's people what you know, what people thought. Internet. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also um, and growing pains were really dad centric, um, but they were family shows. But they were very, you know, for lack of a better word, father knows best. Like there's always that come to dad, dad yeah. will have an answer, and that it felt like Vision was trying to do that. And like, let's see what your father says about Absolutely. the dog. And it, it but the guy, the guy showing up at the very end was very Uncle Jesse ish. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but maybe that's what we're, we're yeah doing. what we're going to go to uh, towards yeah, next. Yeah, yeah. All right, I got to bring this up. But the living room design was very family ties. Yeah, yeah. the dark very wood much, yeah. and everything that looked like they just repurposed the family ties set on yeah. the staircase to nowhere. And family ties uh, from a from a sitcom history was one of the first shows to do like a very special episode when they brought in Tom Hanks as the cool uncle who was an alcoholic. Right. Yes. yes. And there was also wow. the episode where Alex was on speed studying. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they didn't start that, that 
they're kind of playing with that trope in the yeah. fact that it, those special episodes started in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Um, and that's, you know, the, de- the death of the dog is the special episode part of this. Mm-hmm. But uh, I have to I have to bring Dan, this up. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I didn't do a spoiler alert for this episode yet, have I? So there we go. <laughs> Spoilers ahead and behind at this point. Day, day late and a dollar short. Yeah, yeah, I know. So I got to, I got, I keep wanting to bring this up. So the Mandalorian ends and Baby Yoda goes off. So Disney introduces us Baby Vision. <laughs> Was that not the creepiest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> I mean, I mean, first thing. The, the little baby picture was bad enough, but him with the with the beret on doing the math equations on the board. Mm-hmm. Weird. Weird. So, though you'll notice that on the board, this is when you watch it way too many times like I do, mm-hmm. there's actually the infinity symbol on the board. Ah. Of course there is. Yep. Of course. There and there's is. one other reference that I can't think of right now, but there's another... There's other stuff on the board. I'm sure there's going to be a video by somebody who dissects all the math equations on the board and they'll all mean something. Yeah. They hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goodwill vision. <laughs> oh. oh. How do you all like right. them infinity stones? <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll just turn Dan off now. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so from there we move to outside the bubble, outside the hex, and we learn to start calling it the hex, which <laughs> I'm cool. Yeah, which makes perfect sense because her powers in the comics are called hex powers. Ah. So, and the the hexagons have been, you know, so prominent through this whole thing, but then of course you go back through the Marvel universe and you can see hexes pop up everywhere, from. Uh, I mean, even the Guardians of the Galaxy, when they're traveling through yep. the jump points in space, they're going through hexes, hexagonal shapes. So. I'm not really strong in it, but I'm actually thinking a lot of the costumes have that similar pattern in them for years now on the in the MCU. Well, from a, from a nature standpoint, the hexagon is considered one of the strongest building block shapes. The mm-hmm. triangle is considered the most the strongest shape but then if you put triangles to five triangles together you get the hexagon interesting did not know yeah i watch way too much stuff on youtube <laughs> <laughs> okay so out outside we get um we get a lot of stuff going on outside but let's talk about about uh, director hayward Ooh, hiss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a, it feels like he is definitely being cast as a villain. Mm-hmm. And that he wants to make Wanda the bad guy in all this. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, referring to her as the, uh, was the, the prime, um, not the prime suspect, but basically the person doing all the problem, causing everything. Um, also, he seems adamant on getting Jimmy Woo to give her a code name. Like he wanted Jimmy to say Scarlet Witch. And it never, it never, you know, he's like, nope, doesn't have one. Nope, not at all. Nope, doesn't have anything. That's right, yeah. So did you guys get that feeling? And also, what are you thinking on uh, on Hayward? He's not going to make it to the end of the series. There'll be, an, uh, there'll be a new position opening soon. Monica, Ra- Monica Rambo, head of S.H.I.E.L.D. or head of S.W.O.R.D.? Hey, perhaps. I, I could go with that. Yeah. What about you, Rosalinda? What are your thoughts on the wayward Hayward? Yeah, you know, maybe he was uh, a little too nice in the beginning. Remember when he was talking to Monica and, and he was um, very, um, I want to say consigliere. That sounds wrong. Congenial? Con- yeah, congenial. That works. This is not the godfather. Um, <laughs> I'm um, going to make you an offer you can't refuse. You're going to go to Jersey. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was just very, very, very nice and, and very complimentary to her and just very over the top for um, 
a military type dude. And then in this episode, he seemed all, he's, he's very, well, when we see him next, he's very short with Darcy. He's very short with, you know, what they're doing. And, um, and then when we get here, he's, um, seems to have revealed his true colors as a, he seems as some kind of alter. alter he almost seems a little dismissive of uh, Monica for oh, the first yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if he had a meeting with her that morning, why didn't he activate her card instead of making sure he was there in the morning to walk her in? Hmm. He's a plant. He's working for the third power or whatever. Or maybe he's a scroll. That's what I was thinking, too. Because I, <laughs> I just did watch um, Spider-Man. Far From Home? Yeah, Far From Home. And, um, you know, since the last time we talked, and I love that movie. And, you know, when it, we find out that, you know, Nick and Hill were scrolls <laughs> the whole time. Yep. He could, because, because you know, he played very nice in the beginning. So he may have switched after that, you know, after their first meeting from episode four to five. It may be something. And especially, it would make sense if he is a scroll if the astrophysicist that she was talking about is who I think it is. We're going to get to that because that's that's an interesting thing. So I think, it, I that, think that's scroll, more than a throwaway line. I think we're going to find out that the scrolls have been deeper in all the movies the more we get into it. Yeah. Plus, keep in mind that this actually takes place before Far From Home. So, okay. Uh, okay. Um, keeping down my list here. Oh, the video of Wanda stealing the body. He comes in and says he got permission to show it. He's the director of Sword. Who is he getting permission from? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And why did he wait all those days? Why didn't he bring that up in the first place? Did they know it was? Oh, yeah, that's true. So did they know it was Wanda in? They did not, right in the beginning. But of course, if no, but the body, but we're about two days past when they found out. That's true. He needed time to make the video. Yes, it's not actual true video. Well, yeah. that that brings me to a really weird, a little bit out there concept, which is if if Wanda if Wanda is controlling and altering things to the level we're talking about, or we haven't quite talked about yet, um, is it past the hex? It, you is, she, is she manipulating things on a larger the border? Scale? Yeah. Good possibility. Well, my, my thought on that was um, not, not so much the, the uh, manipulating, but it looked like Vision had been taken apart oh, when, yeah. she, when he collected oh, yeah. And in his will, that first thing, the vision had a will. Didn't that strike everybody, anybody as strange? Yeah. Yeah. But that he didn't want to be used for experiments or to be revived. And they were definitely chopping him up and checking him out. So, you know, he claimed, well, Wanda took his body. Well, it looks like he might have taken her, her but she might have taken his body to keep them from doing things with it. Exactly. True. Yeah. Also, both requests denied. Sorry, we're going to take you apart, then we're going to put you back together and reanimate you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You know the government. They always think it's their property, no matter what it is. It's well, true. that that brings you to the idea, how do they get the body? Vision died in Wakanda. Oh, good So, point. We're in Infinity War. So, did the government request it back? Technically, it's the is it the property of the government? Hmm. Is it the property of Tony Stark? Can help build these. Actually, wouldn't it be the property of the Chinese government? <laughs> uh, from the other scientists? Yeah. But well, they I mean, built the, it. In, you know. The Mind you Stone wouldn't belong to anybody. I don't know. That's, that's, wow. That's like half Stark Tech and half the, the cocoon thing that they used to make the body over in China, or mm -hmm. I don't remember wh what country it was in, mm. but yeah, that's yeah. How did they get it? Good question. We're gonna have to put that on our whiteboard. You know, <laughs> how did they get it? You need a whiteboard there, Dan. It, I do. That, I do. The, the wall is crying out for it. I know. <laughs> I actually have the whiteboard on that wall instead, but I should move it. <laughs> two two whiteboards. You're a writer. You need two. 
There you go. Yep. <laughs> All right. So anything else uh, coming from that opening meeting where uh, Hayward was definitely trying to make Wanda the bad guy, even though mm -hmm. Monica and Jimmy were both trying to uh, defend her and Darcy outright called him a dick. I'm sorry. He's a total terrorist, as they did it. <laughs> Um, no, I, again, it's, it's the, his plan seemed to be very, for lack of anything else, obvious. Yes. So that's what, that's another reason why the idea of somebody manipulating where it's like, you're not being a very good leader when literally like other people are bringing up stuff in the meeting and you're kind of like, yeah, never mind. <laughs> you know, the fact that you bring up, it's like, well, she stole the body against the living will of the vision, you know, well, what are you guys doing over here nope nobody really gets to that question yeah that would have been my question yeah why was he in pieces anybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah then of course i'd be kicked out of sword pretty quickly too <laughs> so um all right let's go back into the hex oh did you have anything dan nope oh, okay <laughs> go back in the hex and uh for anybody who reads read the vision run the vision comic series sparky we get Sparky. There's a Vision comic series for people who don't know that uh, I do not remember the writer off the top of my head, um, the creative team, but Vision wants to have a family. He's no longer with Wanda, so he basically creates a wife and two kids who are synthoids like him and a dog that gets named Sparky, whose nice. fate in the comics is almost the same as his fate in the TV show. Eating too many flowers. Wait a minute. Now, can vision control things the way Wanda can control things? Oh, I got some questions about that too, but um, he shouldn't be able to. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. It's a sparky dog that sparks the electrical thing, the kid that they can't control. Maybe they're. And the dog, and she doesn't control the dog it's why the dog dies spoiler alert did we already say that yeah um yeah that um gonna pour maybe, one out for sparky maybe he's doing it cheers to sparky yeah um yeah good dog live one day <laughs> all right anyway, so um, wanda just starts doing magic in front of agnes Agnes now, does not notice. Yeah. Agnes notices. Agnes doesn't comment. Because how could you not notice that the infants became five-year-olds in front of your eyes? <laughs> was it maybe a nod to like some of the ridiculous stuff that happened in like 80s TV shows that people were like, oh, oh yeah. Normal. Oh, yeah, they, they, when would, she, they would constantly uh, age up and recast kids all the time. It's like, you know, we can't do much with them as infants. They're now toddler, or they're now four. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was a pretty common trope. Yeah. So I could see them using that, but now they're also using that yeah. to speed through. Uh, oh, Tyler, uh, her name's Tyler, but it's Bob. We get a R.I.P. Sparky. <laughs> so. Okay, so the aging up part, I can see it from both the sitcom trope but also because they want to make the kids older by the end of the series to use them in other yeah. properties. It was going to be a long, uh, Maybe. long season like, if they were just babies. It's like killing two birds with one stone or two stones with one <laughs> bird, one of, the, one of the things. Well, they, they set it up by you know moving the show by decades anyway. Right. Yeah, so the kids' aging isn't that big of a deal. Yeah, technically they were born in the 70s and then <laughs> are only five years old in the 80s, so they're kind of behind. They yeah. are. No. Yeah. It should be 10. Yeah, and they are now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and everybody had to see it coming when they go, you have to be 10 years old to have a dog. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, but, but Vision is not happy about uh, Wanda using her powers, and that seems to be the first actual fight between them, you know, it's obvious that he's starting to pay more attention and, and figure things or starts noticing the things are wrong, including the whole thing with Agnes taking it from the top. But 
he's now actively rebelling at this point. Well, he had that talk at the office. Well, that's after this. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, the talk at the office is kind of is 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 a huge thing. But I think there's a lot of questions with that too. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, is Wanda just? Do you guys think Wanda is just getting comfortable in the reality now, or is she just kind of losing herself into it? Six of one, half dozen of another. You know, I think she's she knows that this is her home. Now, whether which is not just that place, but that entire town has become her home. So she doesn't want to hide who she is, and she doesn't want to hide what vision is. Hmm. Fair enough. All right. Also, I think she's um, becoming more aware. Like in the beginning, right? It was like maybe maybe she wasn't as aware that she was creating everything, but mm -hmm. now I think she's definitely hyper aware that. This is all, this is all me, and I. There's a lot of energy to expel, as they've been saying. Like, Sword was saying, you know, this is never, you know, to control this large of a space, this many people, and this kind of a thing. Um, so that's got to take a lot of control on her part. And then, of course, with you have the two kids who she can't seem to control. Right. Um, that would create some sort of disconnect or doubt or fear or something in her. Um, because then you're worried about this other thing, but wait a minute, I'm controlling all of this, but there's this thing over here that I can't control. What, how do I, how do I work with this new component? Yeah. Well, it does seem like since she threw Monica out the wall, mm -hmm. literally breaking the fourth wall, because she does go through four walls. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. They, they literally make it her breaking four walls. Um, that she kind of realized what that she was controlling, but it almost seemed like she wanted to get back into character. Oh yeah, you know? she definitely does. <laughs> Vision, stop it! <laughs> right? No, no, this is our home. Everything's fine. It's fine. Oh yeah, I, let it go. Oh yeah, that we'll, we'll get to that ending, but that that rolling credits thing. Oh, oh wow, <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, then we pop back out into, I, I think I've got the right order here. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But we go back out and we find out more about Monica. Uh, we Well, of course, I, I, we missed this, uh, skipped this earlier. Monica's test results being just a flash of white. Yeah. And there's also an issue with the blood work, wasn't it? Yeah. So... Do we think that, um, well, from a not knowing comics, do we think that Monica was changed by Wanda's magic going through the barrier the way she did while being by with Wanda's hex magic carrying her? Maybe, but was she, was her blood work and was she x-ray or after she came back from dan supply me with the word the blip the blip yeah so could it have been the blip or could it have been the hex well i think if it was the blip we'd have half of the planet with suddenly yeah maybe access to superpowers or something weird about them but does monica have superpowers in the comics she does Okay, but she's we're a not skull. talking about the comic, we're talking about the TV show. <laughs> I know that's why. I'm, again, Monica Rambo uh, in the comics uh, has had multiple character names, including at one point being Captain Marvel. Okay. And then she's also been Photon, which is the name her mom used as a fighter pilot. Okay. She's been Spectrum and Pulsar. She has light-based powers, which explains the overexposed uh, X-ray. So it could be that, but it, it just seems like that's more of a, since she's supposed to be in Captain America 2, that, or Captain Marvel 2, that maybe they would, that's something they would deal with in that movie. Hmm. But did anybody, did Dan, did you guys, did you get uh, that feeling that maybe we uh, see the birth of a character there, or birth of a hero? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh... 
definitely. I mean, yeah, because they would otherwise they wouldn't have used that character, you know, Monica Rambo, unless they had some plans for her. Hmm. And um, though whether it was created by Wanda, I don't know. Um, Maybe a combination of all the things put together. Could could yeah, that could. I mean, I don't think it could be just the blip, or like I said, there'd be. If they are going to use the blip to give her powers, that would be, you know, you have to explain why she'd get them and not half the planet. But the uh, X ray is not showing up right. That definitely leads me to believe, you know, with the, like like you mentioned, her light focus abilities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we find out that uh, her uh, outfit is actually Kevlar, and that Wanda's rewriting basically molecular level of things or, you know, so how do you think that plays into some of the things we're seeing inside the hex? Is she reshaping things? Well, when the drone goes in, it looks like a drone, but she shaped it in to look like a toy helicopter. Right. Because, but in the 1950s, there would never have been a drone like that. Exactly. So it shaped, it shaped it into exactly. something that would yeah. so be. So when, you know, when, uh, Rambo walked in wearing her Kevlar uniform. That she Wanda changed it to look like a groovy pantsuit or whatever she was wearing. But the tech molecularly, it's still the same thing. It just has a different appearance, which I would explain like whatever house she's shacking up in has changed. You know, it's basically the same. You know, structure the same. The address is the same actually. Yeah, they keep the same numbers, but it always changes the look. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's like she, so I think the, the, what that is showing is that she didn't create this, any of this out of thin air, right? And like they've, they've pointed to before that these people are, are they missing or have they identified them via their driver's license they had up on the wall right. as this person casts as this person, um, that she didn't magic any of it. She's changed things that were already in place. So she like cast a whole town as her new reality and just changed what was there. But Fair enough. Yeah. The, the thing is, is, to me, this is the first step of bringing out the whatever's going on is not all Wanda. Be simply because these aren't Wanda's powers. They've never been. And even if you, you can extrapolate to a certain point, she her stuff was based on the mind powers. So controlling the other people in the town perfectly makes sense for her. Altering physical matter is not her power, is not something she, in the MCU right. that she's had, which yeah. makes me go, there's there's the other thing in play, which is why things are slowly changing uh, with how how stuff is going on. How, you know... I she's think accessing like, the chaos magic. Well, that's, wait, that brings us into an entirely different concept because of the MCU versus the comic verse and the events in the comic series of Avengers Disassembled. Yeah. Which which is the idea that Wanda doesn't have magic. They, they've claimed it for decades that she had magic, but <laughs> when you have Doctor Strange going, I'm the master of magic, and I tell you there is no such thing as hex magic. <laughs> right. Which brings up something that comes up because of our special appearance at the end of the episode. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely getting weirder and weirder, and maybe that's <laughs> part of where she happens to be. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about that, but it could be where she decided to build this little anomaly, this hex. And that's the other thing that we haven't gone back to. Why did she go to this town? Jimmy Woo showed up because he couldn't contact a witness. Right. Which is how kind of everything started, so... Was the, you know is that person somehow connected to everything else as well? Yep. Because we haven't done anything with that since episode three, three? four, four. Well, okay, so it's only one episode, but yeah, <clears throat> yeah. That that's a big dangler. Yeah. Well, so far, if we if we pay attention to the whiteboard in the scene we're talking about right now, <laughs> we see that Agnes still doesn't have an ID on the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Dottie is still not on the whiteboard. Yeah. But that creepy-ass mailman is now on the whiteboard <laughs> with an ID. Huh. 
So he is just weird. I don't know what's his deal, but he's just another town guy, I guess. I don't yeah. know. But he's on the board with an ID now. So now my thought on Dottie is she either is somebody that's staying off the camera that they haven't even recognized she's there. Because if you notice, they don't even have a picture of her up. They have a mm -hmm. picture of Agnes up. They don't have a picture of Dottie. The other thing that could be, but is that um, would they put the actual witness on the board? Jimmy's witness, would they put his picture up? And is it a guy? I mean, we got the impression it's a guy from the way he talked. Mm -hmm. But could Dottie be the witness? Well, she was I'm, the one that had the weird anomaly of, of the when she cut herself with the glass having the blood. Right. And she's in charge of the town, according to Agnes. Yeah. And that's when she cut herself with Jimmy, when Jimmy was talking through the radio. Hmm. Yep. So it, maybe Agnes is the red herring. Yeah. So we should be paying attention to Dottie, maybe. Yeah. Because also, I mean, I, 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 I don't necessarily know how to judge the star potential, but, you know, Emma Caulfield is not, a, is not an unknown name. Right. Uh, who plays Dottie. Right, and according to an interview with her, Kevin Feige had to sign off on her being cast. Interesting. Yeah. So basically she did an audition where it doesn't sound like some of the other smaller characters. They didn't have to. Um, I saw an interview with the guy who's uh, the, the, the guy in the commercials. Uh -huh. He's a comedian, and I saw an interview with him. And he said, yeah, he just got a call, went up. He did an audition, and uh, they said, well, we'll get back to you. And then months later, they called him, and he, but he never talked about Fahey or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Caulfield said that he, she had to be specifically approved by Fahey. Hmm. So something to think about. Curiouser and curiouser. Yep. What do you guys think that uh, Monica's issue with Captain Marvel is? When Cap Marvel came up, she quickly tried to change the subject. Um, oh, I, I'm going with the, where have you been? I saw you in the 90s and haven't seen you since then. And by the way, my mom died while you were gone. Remember your best friend? That's, the, I mean, that's the rough-ass idea. Yeah. Yeah, a strange godmother or aunt type of thing. Yeah. In the, Rosalind, in the Captain Marvel movie... Um, Ma, uh, Marie Rambo, Monica's mother, is Captain Marvel's best friend. And she'd been missing for years. And when she came back, they hooked up. And Maria ends up going to helping them in space to fight the scroll or the Kree and the scrolls. Mm. Um, and Monica's a little girl in the movie. Okay. So, and, and she, you know, has a nickname of uh, Lieutenant Trouble. So in the, in episode four, when the, if the sound first comes on and Monica's reforming from the blip, the voiceover is Captain Marvel's and, and even refers to her as little uh, as a Lieutenant Trouble. Ah, okay. So that's the connection. That's why. So she should be on good terms with Captain Marvel. And there's obviously some kind of tension going on there. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Uh, the uh, Another question would be, why do Jimmy and Darcy know exactly what happened during the Thanos fight in Endgame. There's probably been tons of research and study on it. Well, Dan, you, you had said what, so how, you had an estimate of how long, because you said obviously the Spider-Man movie hadn't come out yet, so we have how long after um, the, the blip? I the hate blip the blip happened. Blip, the blip happened, so Monica returned. She returned to work at S.W.O.R.D. three weeks later and is immediately sent out to New Jersey. So we're about two or three days after she went into the bubble or went into the hex. So we're looking at less than a month after the fight with Thanos. No, no, no. Well, the after, end game after, after they've returned, so technically five, five years and four months. No, you know what I mean? it's the fight with Thanos took oh, place sorry. five years later. Sorry, so apologies. The, end, the end game fight, not the yeah. So 
They, they and they returned actually before the fight because Hulk snapped them back, mm -hmm. and then they fought Thanos. Right. I'm sorry, I was confusing the uh, Wakanda fight with the, of Thanos with the New York's upstate New York fight with Thanos. yeah the upstate New York fight. So it's only been three and a half weeks. So sure, they could have had helicopters fly out there, but if you're a reporter, are you really flying into the middle of a fight like that? When there's alien ships barraging the ground in a helicopter, I mean, how how do they know? How does Jimmy know that Wanda could have taken it, or Captain Marvel could have taken out Thanos, or you know that that Scarlet Witch could have uh, fought Wanda? Got to keep calling her Wanda. They don't use Scarlet Witch. Yeah. That Wanda. Well, certain yeah. participants of that last battle could have, you know, relayed. You know, yeah. they they probably had, you know, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for, you know? Footage? Debriefing? Debriefings, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, probably may, that very well may have be how, you know, Falcon got his new job. You know, he had to go through that debriefing first. It's possible, but it just seems like that they would have given us a little more than that because mm -hmm. I, I get that S.W.O.R.D. is playing the uh, – the audience in this for us, they're they're asking all the questions we're asking. But at some point you're like, wait a minute, no, you're in that universe. You did not rent Endgame before this happened. You know? They watched it on satellite. Um, I got, I got they, nothing. They... <laughs> yeah, it turns out one of the Avengers has the ability to broadcast uh, live footage around the world. Well, well, now going all the way back to my comment from last week when, when I was just typing in, it's Mojoverse. <laughs> Sorry, had to go back. Yep. Um, what, Monica wants to build a vehicle that will allow her to penetrate the hex. And she's got an, what's the term? A, uh, a, aeronautical engineer, she wants to call. I thought it was like an astrophysicist engineer. Yeah, it was, but it was astro. It was in that vein, astrophysicist, yeah. astronautical engineer, or something. Aeronautical? Aeronaut I thought it was aeronautical. I, I thought I, it was. I, I thought it was astro. I'm. Yeah. I'm not sure, so I'm no. No idea. It's it's the people that build spaceships. Yeah. Hmm. Um. A lot of people. You see speculation all over the internet on who it is that she's texting. Can, yeah. Can you explain that to me? Because honestly, that was completely over my head. Well, they think that whoever she's texting is going to be a character from the MCU, mm -hmm. an established character. And if you're calling in a genius to help you build this thing, there's a handful of people that come to mind. Now, a lot of people immediately think Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. And since they recently, no. recently announced there's going to be a Fantastic Four movie coming up, but it seems really odd to introduce that big a character as a cameo or a side note in a TV show. Yeah, it's far too early. Right. Plus, there's also the joke that everybody thinks it's going to be John Krasinski playing Reed Richards. And if you're an Office fan, John Krasinski's already in this show. Nobody, huh? Oh. What? There's an entire episode where they try, John, they try to uh, mess with another character on the show by replacing John Krasinski with Randall Park, who plays Jimmy Woo. <laughs> All the photos and everything, he just shows up to the office, and everybody acts like he's the guy. <laughs> so an entire episode of he's just, you know, this fill-in. So he's the fill-in John Krasinski. Yeah, I don't think it's Reed Richards. No. It, I mean, if you're talking genius level with what we have, that's Bruce Banner. Banner would be an interesting choice. But I don't know. But is he the right science for that? Probably not. And it seems like an oversimplification for Reed Richards. It's Well, Scott Lang, but probably not. Do you bring in Hank Pym? Possible. But, or do you, do you go new character? Mm -hmm. um, the two that came to mind for me are uh, Adam Bash uh, Basher for uh, the Blue Marvel who's a uh, more obscure comic character, more recent one, mm. but he's currently doing stuff in the comics with Monica Rambeau. 
So that would make an interesting connection to bring that character in. Plus, it would be a major uh, black hero mm -hmm. to bring into the Marvel Universe. And the other one I thought of is Riri Williams, yeah. who is Ironheart. But I don't know if she would actually be an engineer at that point or just a student because she's so young. Yeah, I don't I don't see it being her. That just what if it was depends. I mean there's a lot of scientific scientific geniuses in the Marvel universe. Yeah, like Black Panther's sister. Yeah. Yeah, actually Shuri would make a lot of sense to that, bring yes. in, especially yes. because of vision. Especially because, because I, I I know that's not canon, but as far as I'm concerned, she's got a she's got a backup schematic of Vision that she did before everything went to hell in Infinity War. Yeah, we never find out how far she got of it, but mm -hmm. yeah, so Shiri would make a lot of sense. And there is now talk of doing a uh, Wakanda TV series on Disney yeah, Plus. Yeah, World of Wakanda. World of Wakanda. Yeah. So, and that's that's a very touchy thing, right? Yeah, with uh, with Bozeman <laughs> passing. Yeah, that uh, how they're going to handle continuing it forward, but a world of Wakanda could be very interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right. So, anybody else got any ideas who it might be? Elon no. Musk, maybe. Definitely. He's a super villain. Yeah. Actually, actually, no. I'll go. I'll go really deep, uh, but flip on your theory. It's not going to be Reed Richards. It's going to be Victor Von Doom. That would be fun. Oh, he's that not would, a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be anybody huge. But I think it's going to be an established character, or they they wouldn't have paid so much attention to it. Now, is that going to be the Luke Skywalker? I don't think that's going to be Luke Skywalker, and I don't think what we got this week is the Luke Skywalker either. So, okay, so what? This one's not the Luke Skywalker cameo. This, you know, genius who's going to build the vehicle is not the Luke Skywalker character. But yeah, it's going to be somebody big because the way they're dancing around it. I have my guess, and we can get to that at the end in the speculation section. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be. I, I think it's going to be more actor huge then it's going to be character huge mm -hmm. thor <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think i think it's going to be the stanley cameo uh jane foster they could bring jane foster in jane foster is actually the one that i i was talking with other friends about on another channel and because it she is you know she is a smart person they made her the number one expert uh, according to thor and this completely sets you up to get you to Thor, Love, and Thunder. Yes, but wouldn't Darcy have suggested her, not uh, Monica? Yeah. yeah. Maybe they're not on speaking terms. I, I don't know. <laughs> or Eric Selvig. I thought, yeah, Eric. Yeah, he's just... I'd love to see Eric come back. Oh, if yeah. they're just going to part bringing in side characters, bring in Eric. Come on. Yep. Yeah. Um, Get, okay. get both of them uh, back and rebuild the team from Thor 1. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So moving back into the uh, – Monica comes up with the idea of sending in the 1980s drone. Mm -hmm. And Hayward decides to send it in armed. Can we make this guy more of a mustache twirling villain? <laughs> I mean, this is your – now, give it credit since we are playing with the 80s era – yeah, he is right. your classic '80s douchebag, like real estate uh, government guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, if we can't, if I don't understand it, we blow it up. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and Wanda, who's not having any of it, and I don't know why she oh. referred to herself as Captain Monica Rambo and not it's Geraldine. Mm. Does she Maybe. know her? She knows her. Well, yeah, because she was. So, well, she was. She knows her uh, as Geraldine in the. Uh, but in the she, hex world, does she know her for real? Yeah, but she kicked Gerald, so. she kicked Geraldine out, so or, so I don't think she wants yeah, Geraldine. Yeah. Out world, plus, so. yeah. Plus, I also think it's a if you know if you want to play a psychological thing, it's trying to get her into a reality where it's like that. Should in the fantasy world, you're Geraldine. In the real world, I'm Captain Monica Rambeau. Uh, and by the way, can we take a couple steps back to 
her walking out it walking out of the hex in her standard That's costume. That oh, happens oh, after oh. this. Okay, you were just saying you brought her out. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Go, you, you go. <laughs> we're about to get to that, so but it's not back. It's going forward. Mm -hmm. um, okay, <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, I thought the the fact that uh, and Hayward also didn't tell Monica that they was armed, which seems really out of character. For I mean, I know we said at the beginning, even when he was introduced, he was a little smarmy off it. But as somebody, you know, as someone who's like obviously showed respect to his mom, her, her mom, and the things going on of her, her own status, it's like that's a huge thing to not, to not yeah. tell her about or put her in, into the conversation. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go take on the uh, the the hero that uh, almost went toe to toe with Thanos, and we're gonna try to blow her up. But you go ahead and do your thing. I'm not gonna tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, it almost feels like they're going over the top and making him a bad guy. No, exactly. That's why I keep going back to the, it feels like it's more of an outside influence. Yeah. Well, they have to, speaking as on the as a writer type of thing, they have to make him go over the top, make him look like a bad guy because Wanda still is pretty much the villain, but she still has to be the hero because it's her show. So I could see them making him, you know, throwing as much bag as they can out of this guy just so we still remain sympathetic to the Wanda character. Because, I mean, if he wasn't around, Wanda's a total bitch and we hate her. <laughs> yeah, but at this point, Wanda's not the hero. Vision is. Right. Well, that just happened, you know, that happened all together in this episode. Yeah. I mean, so, but but you still you still have to have a, a head someone heavier than one. Oh, I see what you mean. They, they, yeah. they, you had to have a heavy going into it mm -hmm. to not make it obvious. Yeah. Right. We but, still need to have, because just like, I mean, along like Breaking Bads, I mean, Walter White was a, was the bad guy, but he had all these other heavier characters, so you still were sympathetic to the villain. Um, Big Bang Theory, Sheldon is definitely the villain of the whole show all the time, but you still had other bad guys, so you were sympathetic to Sheldon's character. No, no it wasn't. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's let's go to the big moment then. Wanda walking out mm -hmm. of the of the hex. First thing, it's obvious <laughs> Wanda is not trapped. Nope. She's not being forced to stay there by anybody because she can walk out. And as she walked out, she's in her uh, end game outfit, and her accent is back. Yes. yes. I'm just that right yep. away. Which and, is a little, which is a little funny because her accent was disappearing movie to movie. Yes, very quickly. <laughs> but and then she tosses the drone, and I don't know about you, but how heavy is a drone? It ain't Should light. she be able to just a one arm swing that thing? What about fifty feet? She, well, she does more? have talking power, so she could throw a little. Yeah. Yeah. You think she boosted that a little bit just yeah. to make it look yeah. good? I it was. Have. It was covered with red energy. It was pulsating over it when she tossed it. Oh, okay. I didn't notice when, the red when, energy. When it, when, it hit, when it hits the ground, it's actually kind of flickering across it. Yep. Okay, that makes more sense because mm -hmm. that was a hell of a toss. Yeah. You know, I was like, I don't think I could do that. Jesus. Um, okay. She's got mom arms now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> From baby right. swinging, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So that this this is the moment in a lot of, I think, for a lot of people – that everything flips, that, as we just talked about. Wanda becomes the bad guy. This is almost a Magneto in the first X-Men movie moment where she makes all the guns turn. Just like uh, Magneto had all the guns mm -hmm. in uh, with Ian McKellen. Mm -hmm. And all the guns turn on Hayward. And I will admit, at that moment, I went, shoot! But, uh, <laughs> so... What do you guys think this scene is? Is this the flip or is this too soon? I honestly, I don't see her as the villain at that point. They sent an armed missile to kill her and her family as far as she's concerned. So she, she exercised restraint actually, and basically gave her the, this is your one warning. 
right. uh, and, and I also think the, uh, and also I was with you, all the guns on him, please shoot him. Uh, I also think that, but I think that was actually done to give her the moment to be able to step back and get back in because everyone suddenly focused on that and then right. she made it back in. And I will say though, as much as I don't think she's a villain, that was the best villain stance I've seen in a while. And I think, I don't think she is, but I think everyone else in that area was like, yeah, she's very dangerous. Yeah. She's very, 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 very dangerous. Well, I'm sure every one of those soldiers who suddenly found themselves pointing at their own boss thinks she's yeah. very, very dangerous. And Hayward probably has to go change his pants. <laughs> what about you, Dan? What's, what's your takeaway from that scene? No, it, it was a great dramatic. I mean, it's very it, it, uh, on edge. I loved I loved what she did there to give her the chance to, like you said, fade back into the hex and um, prove exactly, point how powerful she is. Yeah. And that whatever they're trying to do, they don't stand a chance. Do you think the scene would have changed tone had Monica at any point went, yeah, you don't want us to come take away vision from you, but you're holding over 3,000 people hostage against their will. Nope. You don't think, think that would have changed? I think, well, I think the threat about vision, I think would have made her angrier. Yeah. And she knows how many people she's holding hostage. <laughs> I think she's well, creating little realities and, and controlling, mind controlling them. I think she's probably pretty aware that she's, uh, and vision also says something about that to her, unless that was after this. It is. Okay, then never mind. <laughs> Retracted. All right, so Monica tries to connect with her, and it's obvious Wanda doesn't have anything she wants. She's got it all now. Nope, nope. So what do they do next as S.W.O.R.D.? How do they negotiate? How do they... I mean, it's a hostage situation to them, and they just found out that this person wants nothing but to be left alone. And... It's pretty damn powerful. Okay. Maybe I'm not supposed to say this next part because you want to save it as a spoiler alert for the end. So I'm not, I'm just going to say maybe that thing that happens at the end um, is their way of. Oh, you think he's sent in by sword? I don't think she did it. Yeah. She she's caught off guard. Yeah. 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 Okay, we'll get. Says, I didn't do that. Let's let's put a pin in that and bring it bring that back up in in a few minutes. Um, wow, yeah. Okay, let's uh, go back in. We get the commercial, uh -huh. and it it seems to be continuing the uh, displaying of uh, Wanda's tragedies in her life. You know where we we started with uh, the bomb that blew up her parents and. Her and Pietro had to sit next to for days while they tried to rescue them, and it was beeping. Then we had the whole uh, oh. Strucker bringing out their powers and experimenting on them. Mm -hmm. Then the whole them being part, basically brainwashed and part of Hydra as the Hydra Soak. Mm -hmm. And now we get the incident in Lagos where <laughs> she accidentally blew up the building and killed all those people. And I love the tagline of for when you make a mess that you didn't mean to make, or where, where there's a mess you didn't mean to make. As, and and somebody pointed out that if you listened at the end of the commercial and they're wiping the, the juice off the counter, you can still hear it running down the counter even after the paper towels go by. <laughs> wow. So what do you guys think? I've also heard people talk about how they think the uh, – the commercials are based on the different stones. This one would be the ether mm -hmm. being the red fluid. The last one would have been the, the uh, cosmic cube mind stone being the hydro soak box. Uh, the Strucker one would be the time stone. I'm, I, I don't know. This seems like a stretch to me, but it's just one of the theories out there. You guys got anything on uh, what you think about the commercials? I just think that they they're more reflective of her past, and again, I didn't even, I didn't even think about it for the first one that it was the the ticking bomb. 
con as 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 a metaphor. Yep, the toaster starts beeping faster and faster too. Okay. Obviously, I watch this show a little too closely, don't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's your job. <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, do you think they're going to keep doing the commercials? Or how long do you think the commercials are going to stick around? Does she have any more tragedies to go through? Her brother's death, which would probably be really good for the next episode. Thanks. Yeah, because next episode will probably be a 90s. Full house. No, I don't think Full House. I think more along the lines of um, the Fred Savage show. Wonder Years. Wonder Years. I think it's going to be more Wonder Years. And that, and that's the in the 90s is when those kind of single camera sitcoms started where they dealt with heavier dramatic mm -hmm. stuff, such as the death of a family member. It'll be the, I think it'll be the Halloween episode as well. Yeah, exactly. I'm get just from the scenes I've seen the Halloween episode, mm -hmm. you know, I'm getting a very... Um, Wonder Years Wonder feel? Years feel. Yeah. I'll admit I have as well, but I don't think we're past the full house stuff, too. Well, the Wonder Years, I, th I think Rosalinda was saying, was it was late 80s. Yeah. I was going to say, we keep, we're not jumping by decades if we go Wonder Years. Wonder Years Wonder was years 80s? Solid yeah. 80s. It might have oh. ended in the 90s, but it started in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, well, it was in the 90s when they killed his dad. 90s. <laughs> killed his dad. Um, also, okay, Wonder Years started in 88, so that, and since it ran six seasons, the bulk of it was 90s. I think it's, I think, that, honestly, I don't think the Wonder Years type thing will play into it. I think it's going for the Fuller House, and weirdly enough, maybe something like Friends. That would be I don't see how they could do Friends, though, with the fact that, it, I mean, they've been focused more on family sitcoms, mm -hmm. and that's not... <laughs> family sitcom. Well, it's a different kind of family, definitely. Exactly. Like a freighter? So, you know, because, I mean, at, at that point, after the early 90s with something like Fuller House, does is, is the family sitcom really a, as big a thing? Oh. Yeah. You know? It does change a lot. We, we, we start getting more into the pudgy husband with the hot wife he should not actually have. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think we're going to end up seeing the vision gain a lot of weight. Uh, <laughs> um, as far as the commercials go, I I think we'll probably get at least one more. I the problem with the Pietro one is if you're going with kind of the the timeline of the commercials, we've already passed the death of Pietro with Lagos because Lagos was after it was, uh, but I th I, I think they might have flipped them because of when they're introducing the character. It's possible. Or was it the death of Vision? I, if I had to, if I had to guess, I think we're looking at a three act structure, mm -hmm. where episodes one, two, and three were more in the sitcom mode. Episodes four, five, and six are going to split between the two, give us a lot more of the outside world. Seven, eight, and nine is going to yeah. drop the sitcom thing altogether, yeah, and we're going to end up seeing yeah. more like an MCU thing. I think they're almost done with the sitcom stuff. I mean, we still have a little bit more like the Halloween stuff coming up, <laughs> but I think for the most part. It's going to be very limited. I, I think we'll see it. Uh, I think we'll see some of it next, and then it'll disappear. I think we'll get it, and I think we'll either get, we may still get uh, a Vision commercial and a and a Pietro commercial. Also, though, if if the point of the TV shows that we think are from her childhood growing up in Sokovia, watching old American television shows, you might not get a '90s show because if she wouldn't have seen it. She wouldn't have seen it. it would have been contemporary it would have been along the same timeline that she was living in mm -hmm. though she does get stuck in avengers uh compound for a while <laughs> and they're not they're not allowed to go out so okay she'd probably okay. go back to watching tv okay one more <laughs> so we'll have to see how but i do think we're going to get i think seven eight and nine are going to drop the sitcom thing mostly if not at all together and we'll get more of a traditional MCU type thing. We're going to get more of an action based, you know, where they actually bring in stuntmen and stuff. <laughs> well, that'll be interesting too, because then what will one, what will the hex look like? True. Will the hex even exist anymore? Or will it be sword trying to break into the hex? Right. 
that's the one thing about this show is that so many possibilities mm -hmm. that it's really hard to predict where it's going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with the Mandalorian, it was a little easier to predict because they kind of laid things out. You could Later. follow the path and sure. We couldn't tell who the Jedi was going to be, but there was a good chance we were getting a Jedi in that last episode. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the hell we're going to get with in each episode of this series. Even when we see the trailers and the, and the sneak peeks and stuff. Which, um, I, actually, I've, and I've avoided all of those. I, I think I even told you the, the most recent promo that's like episodes six through nine or whatever. I'm like, I watched literally five seconds. I'm like, that's enough. I don't need to yeah. know anymore. I want to watch it the episode and just enjoy it. Yeah. Well, we go back into the uh, hex and visions at work. And this is where things really get strange. Uh, he's setting up the computers and they get an email that everybody reads. And it's basically from sword talking about the Maximoff anomaly and how the radiation levels are growing. And first thing, why, why do they get that email? Is that something do you think they sent in or is it just, wasn't that right when um, Monica was like, wait a minute, don't I need to do something that works with their technology in that same time period? Wasn't it right around there? Was, right, but that's, she was talking about the drone at that point. I, we we don't know that. Okay. I don't think she said. And well, then okay. the email. So, maybe so you think it's they sent that in on purpose? Yeah. 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 Okay, so you think that they are like, hey, we can contact the vision. Well, are they anybody? They're, yeah. yeah, they're trying to contact everybody, you know, yeah. they're trying to contact all the hostages. Yeah. yeah. It's a variation of what they try to do with the radio in the 50s. Right. Okay, so Vision then gets up. Wait, he turns the computer off by touching it. <laughs> <laughs> then he touches Norm and snaps Norm out of, out of the hex, out of the trance he's in. Mm -hmm. And he is terrified. He's got a sick father he wants to get back to. He's worried about. Uh, he is. T he acts like he was being, basically it was painful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and says, you've got to stop her. You can't let her keep doing this. And Vision puts him back in the trance. Mm -hmm. Now, this leaves me with a bunch of questions. How is Vision interrupting the Hex and then putting them back? He's never had any power on that level. Residual energy from the Mind Stone. Remember, because in because go back to Infinity War, that was the only way to destroy the Infinity Stone was because Wanda had had the powers in herself. He that was his whole theory of how he she would be she would be the only one who could destroy it. Okay, so you're thinking I, his I know, I, I'm, I'm hand waving a bit. I know, but yeah, I'm saying because he doesn't have the Mind Stone, but he he was in possession of it. In, in the, if, it, if it gives off a, a power radiation or whatever you want to call it, what Wanda had would have been a, a, a smaller amount than the actual stone being embedded into him. True. Again, it's it's. I, it's don't, a I, hand I get it. I think we're all going to reach on. Anybody else got a theory? Electrical shock. Uh, but and 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 I almost would have bought that he just kind of shocked him to snap him out of it. But then how does he put it back in? And how does he even know he can do it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's like he touches the computer. It's almost like he turns it on, he turns it off. Right? Like Yeah. Right? The electrical current. I don't know. He seems very sure of himself that he can. Exactly. Is it part of his phasing powers? It, it, but how would that work? I mean, I think a lot of people just went, oh, yeah, he can do it. How? <laughs> Be, okay, again, I'll I'll hand wave this as the because the power itself, the power to be able to phase was part of the mind stone. It keyed into the same frequency, for lack of any better word, and disrupted it. But you're right; it also still. But how does vision bring it back? Yeah, yeah. There's just just a big question there, mm -hmm. and I've got this whole theory that vision isn't vision. That uh, if you guys want, I, I'll throw that out at the end. I've done a video on it, but we'll we'll do that in the speculation section. But um, Norm is is literally petri petrified, and Vision puts him back in it. 
I think Vision's freaked out. Vision doesn't know what to do with Norm. Yeah. There's so, no other... Yeah. I mean... Yeah, if he let Norm out, he'd blow his cover. And also, his, and Norm's a little hysterical, and he can't help Norm. Right? Yeah. He yeah. wants his phone, yeah. wants to get a hold of his family members, and Vision can't... There's literally no way for him to do any of them. So what's best? Like, letting Norm freak out for a while, or put Norm back in his box while he goes and talks to Wanda? Okay. No, I, I get that. And again, I got I have no answers on that one. I have no theories on that one. That's that's all just very strange. Especially because it's also the reaction of everybody else, because they all start chat going through the email in unison. Yeah. Yes. Which is another what what? Yeah. And then they all laugh about it. Very sick. Like it's a joke. Yep. Uh by the way, this is also the first possible continuity error in the series. Was it the email? Not the email, the the event, the event with Norm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people they took the whiteboard from episode four and blew it up, so they could read mm -hmm. the writing on the on the papers for all the different people. And on Norm's paper, it has this incident written out that Vision wakes him from the trance, oh. and you know, so. You only see it if you're one of those, uh, you know, people that can blow the damn thing up. And, but yeah, so it's the one continuity error that we've seen so far, mm -hmm. and that's only if you really were looking. Yeah. But in a show like this, you have to know the fans are really looking. Yeah, yeah. There's people talking about uh, hands and mirrors and faces, and I mean they're they're zooming in on background mirrors to look for things. So, wow. <laughs> Yeah, That's yeah. There's a there's one guy who has a has a a, a a podcast who is convinced that Mephisto is behind all this, and is constantly looking for Mephisto and everything. Hmm. Oh. So, okay. Maybe that. Now, was, go ahead. I said maybe that will pay off for him. <laughs> it could, and and you know what, Mephisto is a good possibility. Yeah. He still is, but, um. Back in the show, we uh, the dog comes up, and the kids and and uh, Wanda are looking for the dog, and of course we come across the creepy ass mailman. I don't get this mailman. What what what's why is he there? Anybody? Nope, I got nothing. It's two bizarre scenes that he comes up in. Is there a creepy mailman in sitcoms? <laughs> Well, there is in um, <coughs> Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Newman. 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 Yeah. Newman. Yeah. So, but he's he's got he's got an ID on the board, so he is a resident. But and and the, and the line he says, "Well, your mom won't let him get far." That seemed kind of funny to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not. Oh, your mom should be able. Or your mom. You, you, your mom won't let him get that. Well, and he just knows what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. But how? Her one. Maybe, what, sorry. I think, sorry. I think maybe, the, you know, the more Wanda has to use her power for other things, the less it's starting to affect the citizens and they're starting to come. Exactly. Become aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Could be. Could be he's the witness and he's just uh, like, hey, I'm hiding here anyway. I'll hide in the 50s or the 60s, set whatever. <laughs> I will be uh, your creepy mailman. Nope. That's right. I will do rain, sleet, or even uh, decade change. Mm -hmm. I will deliver the damn package. <laughs> okay. Then, of course, we get to the dead dog. The death of Sparky. We all, we all love Sparky. Sparky. Oh, this is an interesting one. Male people know everything that's going on their routes. That's that's <laughs> very true. That's that's excellent. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. All right. So, first thing, how many people think that uh, Agnes actually killed the dog? Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> Because that seemed, uh, yes, Azaleas can kill dogs if they eat them. Really? But come on, yes. I did not know. Yep, Azaleas are poisonous to dogs. 
So if you have a dog, don't plant azaleas in your backyard. Okay. But yeah, so that did seem pretty, pretty shifty, her coming up with all wrapped and stuff. Yeah. Also, if um, like Norm and Herb, if they're hostages, okay. Yeah. But if Agnes is not a hostage, right? Let's jump back to when she paused and was like, "Are we gonna do this again?" Right. Are we gonna do this? Like, right. Like the hostage wouldn't do that. Hostage is being controlled by Wanda. So if they're not in Wanda's thing, they're trying to be themselves. So again, if she is somehow in on what's going on, um, then maybe she does have her own autonomy to yeah. for some reason murder Sparky. Yeah. Maybe she's the villain. Oh, this is jumping back a little bit, but <laughs> did you guys notice that the kids keep track of time even though no one else does? No. No. Oh, when, yeah, because the dad, where's dad? The, He's at work. It's Monday. Oh. Yeah. It's Saturday. No, it's Saturday. It was Saturday this morning, and all those people are at work like it's a Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just thought that was a neat tidbit. Um, so the kids, the kids seem to know that Wanda can bring things back from the dead or think she can. Mm -hmm. Now, she says no, but is she saying no because she can't? Or she doesn't think she should. Could Wanda bring the dog back from the dead? It was I think a, it... Sorry. I say it was a little tongue-in-cheek if she... Uh, especially when Vision walks up, if she has in fact brought Vision back. Um, it was definitely a tongue-in-cheek about how you should not do that and things are gone, they're gone forever. But the kid says, but it's, you said families forever. Right. And then there's vision. So, yeah. Is it, is, so the, again, is she, is she d not doing it because she shouldn't or can she not? And is that a clue? The fact that vision isn't vision. She didn't bring vision back to life. Mm. I, I don't think she has brought vision to life. I think he's, she's animating him ostensibly. She's animating a corpse. Okay, that gets into robotic necrophilia, and that gets kind of creepy. And, which, which, which is all about Wanda and and Vision over the over the years. So, <laughs> well, not the necrophilia part. It's always been the robotic part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and but that's just is, like that's yeah, a that's bridge too like, far. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there are bridges left anymore. You know, <laughs> does Vision vibrate? <laughs> um, Maybe he just needed new batteries. <laughs> uh, he, well, he can phase through, and uh, I'll, I'll just stop there. Yeah, yeah, um, we're just going too far. But Warren, but the, War, Warren Ellis once said that uh, the only taboos left, or there are no taboos left, because of the internet. Everything has become uh, mainstream. Even the most bizarre things have become mainstream because you put it into a browser, and suddenly. There you know, is. Godzilla Bukaki is now a thing. Uh, Crooked Little Vein. Yes. Good book. Yes, it is. Uh, I do have one thing to say about the, 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 I think this is about the dog. This is not something I think Wanda would have done. Like this lesson that they're going through. Yeah. She's, she's as surprised as anyone if the dog is dead. And therefore having this lesson about, even, you know, some things have to say that way. I think that's her subconscious, you know, kind of reminding her like what she's doing with the vision is not right, but it's an outside source making it happen. Yeah, that, that she would never, have, she would never have done that to the dog, to the okay. to their dog. Okay, I'm going to throw this out there then because it just popped in my head. What if the kids, whoever's man manipulating all this, put the kids and the dog and stuff in it to help? Wanda deal with her grief by having her help the kids through their grief. That makes a certain sense. Maybe the hex is actually one big therapy for Wanda. Yeah. It's pretty messed up therapy, but yes. But she's had a lot of messed up things in her life. Yeah. Although it, uh, 
is it working though? I don't, I don't know that she's, I mean, other than, other than this one moment with the kids, I don't know that I'm seeing her improve. Nick thinks that the fight is between her conscious and her subconscious. Oh, that's so her subconscious is doing these things. Well, um, no, I, I can't 100%. I think she's having that fight. I think Agnes, if we're going by the idea that she is the Agna, uh, Agatha Harkness, uh -huh. is trying to teach Wanda, is using what Wanda's grief and what she's built and trying to actually get her to get past it. Maybe maybe Wanda went to Agatha Harkness for help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in in trying to go get through this, you know. Uh, or, mm -hmm. or she was actually just in the town. I mean, I know it gets a little too coincidental on something like that. But ostensibly, she's, as a character, has either been the person that recognizes the changes and the things that are going on more than all the other residents of the town. And every time she's shown up in the sitcom, it's always right when they need it. That's, I believe, Vision comments yeah. on that. Yeah, and that's, she's going to show up with the, yeah. Why he has his face on in the, in the morning. And <laughs> yeah, Nick adds that, no, he thinks that uh, her conscious is doing the bad stuff while her subconscious is trying to fight it out. So her her conscious is the one making this world and is trying to create this utopia for herself. And her subconscious is like, no, this is wrong. Yeah. No, I can't, you know. That's possible. I mean, that's the thing, is at this point, anything is possible. Hmm. So I mean we all have our theories, but yeah, it could be any of that stuff at this point. Yeah, we are only halfway through the series. Yeah, we have we have, we're now over the halfway point. So yeah. Um and she stops the kids from aging up at that point because she can tell that they want to do that to age past their grief, which I don't even know how you would do that. Distraction. Yeah. Well, here, here comes the interesting question. The death of the parents and when Pietro and Wanda were stuck with the bomb, wonder what age they were. Ten. The exact oh. same age the kids are now. There you go. She's reliving her greatest nightmares, mm -hmm. basically. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. But this again, that I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, I just I think the idea, like I said, the idea that I'm trying to go with is that while this is horrible, like if Agnes is somehow adding to the the elements of what's going on, it's because she knows she has to go through process. She has to go through the stages of grief. Yeah. And she isn't. Unfortunately, she's also in what I don't know what they do in the MCU. If she's an alpha level, you know, uh, person was a uh, person of mass destruction. Yes, Andrew, you said something interesting the layers of grief or the stages of grief. What are the yeah. stages of grief? Can we mark those through from the first episode? Like, is it denial? Like, if you look at all the episodes, does it yeah, it's. Let me let me pull that up. I know there's yeah. denial and there's bargaining mm -hmm. uh, stages. Maybe it, maybe it doesn't match. Which would be well, I think it could be because uh, theoretically this might be bargaining. In the fifties, uh, of, of, of the dog. Well, there's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Okay, fine. <laughs> so we we could very easily be in anger. Mm -hmm. We could, this could easily be anger. I guess, I, well, I guess she was angry. When does um does she see the sword people before or after the dog dies? Before. Before. So I would even suggest that she, when she's talking to the kids, she says you can't move past you know your grief. You have to you have to be mm -hmm. here in it and sit in it. So maybe that's acceptance. Even. I could see this whole thing being Wanda's basically having a mental break, and this is you know, is her, do, you know, trying to cope with it. And Agnes has put herself in it to try to help guide her through it. Yeah. So that's why she shows up at all the right times and, you know, does all the things that are needed and, and forces herself in. And plays along this, with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the and magic. realizes that Geraldine is an outside influence and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so I, I don't necessarily think Agnes is, 
a negative aspect of the show. Mm -hmm. If anything, she's probably more of a, a guiding to try, or try to guide Wanda back to health or back to mental health. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And which, of course, leads, is there a, other, so is there another big bad or is it just Wanda's grief? Oh, God. I mean, that really comes down. I, I think the problem is for some of us who are steeped in the comic lore, mm -hmm. we know what the kids were, why they were, you know, where they came from. So we know how it plays out in the comics and in our, it's hard to divorce ourselves of that. You know, that's why everybody, that's why a lot of people think it's Mephisto because it's Mephisto in the comics mm -hmm. and the MCU has proven they're not going to do the same things. So it's hard, but it's hard to divorce from that, you know, where it's probably easier for somebody who's coming in fresh or doesn't have the comic background mm -hmm. to just go, yep. It could just be Wanda is losing her mind. And this whole thing is like, you know, there is no big bad. Wanda is the big bad. But, you know, it's her, it's her trauma. That's or the trauma is really the big bad. All the yeah. horrible things she's going through. Yeah. And this whole thing is going to basically be Wanda's therapy session that just happens to open up the multiverse. That's where I'm leaning towards. Mm -hmm. And oh. it's, it's her, her grief is, effing everything up is causing all this problem and it, and i can see this you know parlaying into different aspects of the marvel cinematic universe it could be you know intro to the next doctor strange movie it could yep. be it could be an intro to the fantastic four coming in it could be you know one of these characters could be loki and it could be you know leading up to the loki series so yep. i think i think i honestly believe it's her grief and she's causing it yeah. And in her using her magic to do it is causing this turmoil or chaos, which will lead to these other Marvel to the phase what phase three, phase four that we're going on in the phase four is the next phase. So I think it's her grief causing the chaos that'll open up phase four wreck of movies and TV shows. That, that makes a lot of sense. Now yeah. I th I think there could still be a big bad involved, but I think that creating this world is Wanda is her dealing with her grief because we are just three weeks away from her losing vision. And the big bad could be taking advantage of Wanda. Yes. Creating this herself. Yeah. Seeing Wanda and, and, this and then and say, well, let me step in and try to control mm -hmm. Wanda in a weakened state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still think there was somebody pushing her to have the kids. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because the whole thing with for the children, for the children, there's no children in the goddamn town. <laughs> yeah, that's creepy. So, yeah, I, I, I think that there's definitely other people at play, but I think Wanda is a bigger driving force of this. You know, she's not trapped, but we learned that when she walked out. Mm -hmm. She could have kept going. Mm -hmm. She could have dropped that thing at any time and just went on home. So, all right, let's uh, let's see. Keep moving on here. Uh, okay, they go back to the house, and I think this is where Vision. I think Paul Bettany is oh. just going ahead and earning his his Emmy right now. The whole scene, he comes in, he washes his hands, and he brings up Norm, and she obviously doesn't want to talk about it. And says, well, you can't control me. And she's like, can't I? Roll credits. Mm -hmm. And he even points out, you know, what are you going to do? We're going to watch TV, go to bed, and tomorrow you're going to change everything. But he doesn't allow that to happen. He doesn't allow the credits to roll. He follows her. And then the big confrontation happens. And to me, that I think is probably one of the best uses of this whole sitcom trope that they've been doing oh very much yeah you know, the forcing the credits and him just walking through them so and, it, you... and, and and they disrupt yeah like they don't even just stop they just they kind of electrically disrupt yeah uh what did you guys think what was your feelings when all that started happening Dan? well i like the fact that he washes his hands is he washing his hands of everything? 
I'm going to. Oh, good symbolism there. I like that. Yeah. Wow. You By the way, any... play along anymore? Hmm. Yeah, that's that's a good good thought there. By the way, for anybody who cares, the uh, Bucks beat the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, thirty-one to nine. Yeah. And, and as one of my sports going friends have said, that means that Tom Brady has more Super Bowl wins than any team. Wow. <laughs> that, that's impressive. Yep. Yep. And I guess he just proved that he could do it without Bill Belichick, and Belichick hasn't done it without him. <laughs> exactly. Yep. All right. Staying on topic. Uh, yep. Um, Rosalinda, what were your uh, thoughts when all of a sudden the credits start to roll and he just blows past him? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting is when, you know, he was saying like, you, do you say like you can't control this or you can't? And she said, can't I? At that point, you're like, no, because you're not controlling vision. Right. You know, like this is and you can see her struggling with that. Like, I'm I'm. But she had few times before. She rewound him a couple times. She did. And I, I feel like he's like I don't I don't know that she didn't try, but he or and he's fighting it now. Um, but he's clearly asserting his um, free he's, will at this. He's point. become self aware. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Again. Um, yeah. What about you, Andrew? How'd that uh, that scene hit you? Well, I, I liked it because it was definitely the. Oh, we're we're getting the, we're getting we're escalating, and now we're getting to the confrontation that everyone wants because Vision now understands he's he's in something. He's not yeah. he's not actively doing something. He's in the middle of something, and he's not going to put up with it. And and the fact of the level of his response is interesting because we've never seen angry Vision or that emotional Vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a synthoid. Yeah, can uh, should he be getting that that emotional? Well, that also brings well as part of it, and I I'm kind of a stretch because I'm not 100 percent sure when he finally goes and lifts himself up in the air. He's mirroring the exact way Wanda does it, which makes me think that the whole anger that he's having is because she's hiding her anger. Hmm. Interesting. It was a funny way for him to levitate, but then he did that earlier during the uh, pregnancy scene mm -hmm. where he just kind of floated off the ground. It was just weird to me. It's like, it was the angle of, of one of his legs. It's like when they both go up, you're like, this is a, they're a mirror of each other. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I pictured they struck it. I, when I saw that, I saw it as a comic book cover. Oh, that's a yeah. Cool. Yeah. It looked very like that. Oh, I'm pick, picking this issue up off the shelf. Look at that cover. Oh, yeah. You'd approve that one instantly if it came across your desk. <laughs> yeah. uh, yep, yep. Go with that one. That's the layout to use. So, so. That okay. needs to happen. Well, the two big things we learn in the next minute there is that uh, Vision is scared and he doesn't remember his life before Westview. Mm -hmm. Not he doesn't remember being killed. He doesn't remember anything. So when he was at the table during the first episode and couldn't tell the story of how they met, because he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. His memory starts there. But neither could Wanda. It's true. And, and that's what I'm going with. Vision yeah. doesn't know unless Wanda knows. Why does and, Wanda and, or at least it was. And that's yeah. escalated. But Wanda knows how the vision and he met. Wanda knows those things. She just doesn't have a cover story for it or a made up story. Yeah. But she, you know, hmm. I could have seen them fudging their way through. Well, we met through work and, you know, mm -hmm. but the fact that she couldn't even think of something and he couldn't and they just froze. That seemed a little strange to me. Well, okay, in a series of strange, it seemed a little extra strange. Well, that was the beginning of Wanda with her universe. Yeah. And she didn't and she was taken aback by something she wasn't prepared for. Well, she does say a minute later that she doesn't know how any of this started. Oh, yeah, that whole little conversation is gets more and more telling 
because yeah, she doesn't know how this all started. And then you think I'm doing controlling all these people and the male people doing mail and going to work and all this. It's like going to the dentist office. Yeah. And, and to which all of us in the audience are going, wait, you aren't. Yeah. Or the, the fact that the vision points out there are no children. It's like, we all saw that. Now he's seen it. The, the playground is empty every morning when he walks to work. And why are there no cars in this damn town? Sure, the doctor's car didn't work next episode, but everybody's walking. It was because if you, had a, if you had a car, you could leave. Or try to. <laughs> they drove into town in the first episode, and the doctor had a car. And other than that, you really don't see cars in this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of bicycles. Yep. Which Even the mailman's walking. Okay. okay now we get to the... Uh, the moment the doorbell rings and Vision doesn't believe she didn't do that. And she swears she doesn't mm -hmm. or she didn't. Yeah. I don't think she did. I don't think she did. No, I, I think this is definitely someone else's doing. Um, and also, this is. I oh, love Darcy's response when she opens the door. Yeah. <laughs> So he opens the door, and we get that that the hesitation. We get the back of the hair, and and they did wait, the wait, hair. Wait, 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 wait. I, I'm gonna pause. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you as the host, but we cut back to the real world in between those those takes because we cut back to Dar before Darcy says her line. You cut back to it, and one of the things I want to know is klaxons are going off at the sword base. Yeah, Why? what's going on at sword? Yeah. Something something went off the went off the scale with it just as that event happens. So, I'm sorry. So, yeah, that's a good point. That something is making sword go on alert. So, yeah, that's a good thing. I I, I missed over that, but you're right. Um so while she's going back to the screen and sees the scene, then we cut to the back of the visitor. Mhm. Mm and the hair is done more of the MCU version of the character than it is the uh, Fox version of the character. Yeah. Because at Fox, he's all silver hair. In the MCU, it's darker and the silver on the top. Oh, I didn't notice. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, which one are we getting? Oh, and that's then, what I love. So I love that. Because you're like, because yeah. everyone in the audience is kind of like, they're, it's the half surprise of, oh, it's Pietro, of course. You know, it's kind of that, oh, it's Pietro. Of course it is. It's the wrong Pietro. And then the reverse shot. Yep. And then we see, of course, Evan Peters. He never says his name. Mm -hmm. He And even when she goes, Pietro? He just goes, he just <laughs> gives that look like, you know, it wants to squeeze my sister to death. Is what he says. Mm -hmm. And he's playing it in definitely, I mean, he's extra douchey in a way, <laughs> too. And that might just be the Uncle Jesse type thing or the, the favorite Uncle Douchey thing. But my my the big difference for me between the two characters, the MCU Quicksilver felt more like the Quicksilver from the comics, where the Mar uh X-Men uh Quicksilver was much more smart ass, much more millennial. I don't know. I don't know a good way to put it, but he's much, you know, fights and smart, you know. So and this seemed even a few steps above that. Hmm. You know? It seemed very sitcom. Mm -hmm. to yeah, me. it it definitely does feel like the guest star on the sitcom. I bet if we look back at the Tom Hanks thing, that's how be how his character was when he showed up on uh, Family Ties. Mm -hmm. um, but, okay, so what were your reactions on uh, on the scene? We'll start with Rosalinda since, you you know, I, I, I don't even know if you've seen the X-Men movies. I have not. Um, yeah, so from the back of his head, like you were saying, I thought it was the MCU one because I mm -hmm. did watch most of that movie that you recommended. Um, and... And then I, I think you put up the pictures last week of the two mm -hmm. different Quicksilvers. So I was able to recognize when they changed and I had the same reaction Darcy had. 
Like, <laughs> love she, that line. She recast her brother, and I was like, ah, yeah, and that that is so you? sitcom. Right. Like, yeah. The recasting, yes, like the Darren from Bewitched. Um, yep. Aunt Viv. Yeah. <laughs> so it was that. So I, I don't really have any back knowledge of his character to be like, oh, he doesn't feel quite right. Um, Thanks, Nick. Have a good night, Nick. Hi, Nick. Good night, Nick. Um, but yeah, it was. I think I think we were expecting it, or I was expecting it at, at some point. So when the bell rang, the doorbell rang, I was like, oh, I think I know who this is going to be. Um, not sure like what kind of a wrench it throws in maybe maybe the wrench is we have to behave now because my you know family member is visiting and now we cannot fight right which is Ooh, not like that's a good one sitcom. yeah the calm thing so maybe that's where it's leading to in the next episode i don't know i don't know why he's there i don't know who put him there i don't think it's uh wanda okay dan yeah, I see it. For, well, it didn't surprise me that he showed up. I mean, just to talk about it and the buzz about it. And, but the fact that he shows up then and there is, I think somebody, whoever else is watching it, not sword, but the other part, let's say another party says, oh, shit, is about to hit the fan. Plug it up. Throw time to, you know, throw this at it. You know, just change it to bring it, you know, bring, de deescalate the situation. That's why I think he's there. Now, the fact that who it is, as far as, you know, from which universe or whatever, I just, the editor in me is just like, hey, wouldn't it just be cool if we just cast this guy? Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be that he's yeah, I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't think it's anything monumental more than, hey, look at us. Aren't we clever? Pat on the back. See what we did here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Andrew? You see, I, 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 the, the context thing I have to say is, since I'm East Coast, I, I have to, I'm up at three in the morning or six thirty in the morning to watch the episode so I don't get spoiled, because, you know, the internet is full of barbarians. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, honestly, the reaction I, I just was like, wow, there is now the world before episode five and the world after episode five. I might eat my words next week. That's a completely different thing, but. Dropping Ev Ev Peter Evans Evan Peters in is I don't think is done, done slightly. It's also the the neat thing for for if for Feige as well to tr put him in because it's the one crossover piece from years ago when they talked about the fact of wait how can you guys have that and that and it's like well that's the one t one of the p few properties that crossed over into Fox and Disney so using that as the bridge in a sort of a meta way to go, this is our first step into integrating integrating the Fox universe of, of Marvel into this, at least for me. And it, and, and honestly, I was like, I was fanboy. I was just like, I, wow, I cannot believe they went this, they went this way. You know, I've got to throw something in there now. You brought this up and you've got me thinking. My first thought on this was, this isn't Quicksilver. This is just another member of the town being cast as Quicksilver, mm -hmm. just like everybody else is being cast as someone. That's why she doesn't recognize him. And then when Dan was talking, I started thinking about, well, what if the third person, the third party person is playing like an editor or a director in this and mm -hmm. is looking at it and goes, well, you know, we need to Fonzie to jump the shark at this point. We need something to happen. <laughs> Well, season two, you know, season three is getting, or episode three is getting boring. Let's put kids in. Okay, here we are. <laughs> oh, we need something to happen here to spark things up again. Let's throw in a long lost relative. And that's why he shows up. There's also the possibility that um, Billy is doing all this using his magic. Because he asked. Uh huh. About the brother earlier and mm -hmm. thinks mommy might want to see if mommy and daddy are fighting. Maybe if her brother came to visit. But then Andrew brought up the klaxon. And that klaxon has been meaning in the series a breach of the hex. So something has gone through the hex. It's Loki. Well, this is a 1980s era. 
Wanda and Pietro were born in 1989. So if Pietro actually went in and was supposed to look like what he looked like in the 80s, he'd be an infant. But that Pietro from the other universe is from the 80s. Mm -hmm. Maybe the hex changed him, or maybe he came in from a multiverse. Maybe that's what the klaxon means. Mm -hmm. But it's possible that whoever Pietro is, or whoever Evan Peters is playing is from outside the hex and just came in. I think that's so. why the klaxon went off. And is the klaxon the right term for it? An alarm? I that's I yeah. it's the writer part of my brain trying to make it sound cooler. Oh, okay. <laughs> alarm, klaxon, siren. And like it that. would make sense if it is him from another multiverse, since they're definitely, you know, Spider-Man Far From Home played in the multiverse. Uh, you know, there's yep. you know, into the spider-verse was such a huge hit that the next oh. Spider-Man movie oh, yeah. is gonna involve the spider-verse multiverse and and Doctor know, Strange is gonna be the multiverse of madness. And it could, yep. yeah, and it could be a great way to bring in the Fantastic Fours from another multiverse. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it could be very well just played in the multiverse setup. And since this takes place in before Spider-Man: Far From Home, does that mean that JJ J. J. Jonah Jameson is from the multiverse? Suddenly, he appears at the end and. No, I think he, I, I think if he did, then he would be the editor of the Daily Bugle. Maybe, I think I think this is our version of the J. Jonah Jameson is the one with the with the podcast or whatever. It yeah. Is, so. so yeah, I I think the bottom line here is that this could be anything at this point. I think we don't really just but just by the fact that it's Evan Peters standing there doesn't guarantee that the X Men are now part of the Marvel universe or the MCU. It Absolutely. could be. It could be. It could be something completely different. Go ahead, um, Andrew. I was just again having this discussion with another group of people. And I said, "What could be interesting is they could be turning it on its head, because everyone's like, it's too early. Because to, whatever you want to say about the movies as they went along, it feels like if you if you were a new studio and you just acquired them, you'd want a little cooling off period between the last of these X Men movies and this one. Yeah, which bombs. So if you want to twer twerk or twist, uh, flip it, you introduce mutants." You don't introduce the X Men. <laughs> you actually spend a several years and get to maybe phase five is when the X Men actually exist, but you bring mutants into the MCU world. Which goes along with what Fai he said. It's that he's got the next phase already planned, and we wouldn't get X Men until after that. Yep, but so, it doesn't mean. But it doesn't mean you can't have you can't have mutants. Yeah. Now. The last thing said in the episode is Pietro turns to Wanda and looks over at Vision and goes, who's the popsicle? Does that mean he knows that Vision's dead? I just think he looks colorful like a popsicle. I was thinking pop like father. I don't know. <laughs> I... I, I just don't know because I, I could see it being the, the fact that he can see it, but it's that's a really weird choice of words. Yeah. For for to describe a corpse, basically, or a or a gray lifeless thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So all right. So that gets us to the end of the episode, which gets us to the speculation part. The Evans Peters cameo. Now and uh, what Dan brought up, uh, that uh, Elizabeth Olsen has said that, <clears throat> to paraphrase, someone, somebody asked her if um, WandaVision would have a cameo in it on par with how they were able to keep the Mark Hamill appearance at the end of The Mandalorian secret. Would they have that big of a cameo that would surprise everybody? Luke Skywalker moment. Yeah, the Luke Skywalker moment. Now, she didn't call it a Luke Skywalker moment. She didn't say, oh, we're going to have a character that big. She just said there's a, a surprise that will get fans. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily think that it could be a character. 
it could be an actor playing somebody. So I'm kind of all over the place what it could be. A lot of speculation. Well, first thing, it being Evan Peters, I don't think that's it because there have been rumors about Evan Peters showing up for oh, months. Really? Oh. Yeah. Oh, never heard a word. So glad. Yeah, but you, you purposely try not to hear words. Yeah. Doesn't mean I don't hear things. Yeah. And get spoiled. <laughs> okay, so but so I don't think it's the Evan Peters. Plus, I don't think it's in the middle episode mm -hmm. is when they're going to do the cameo. Mm -hmm. I think it's more likely at the end. Mm -hmm. There's been some speculation that it might be a Magneto appearance, which I think would complicate the hell out of a lot of things. Yep. Plus, you've got to decide which Magneto you're going to use. Do you go with Ian McKellen, probably the most popular, but also pretty old at this point? How many Marvel movies are you going to get with Ian McKellen? Do you go Michael Fassbender, who is only 11 years older than Elizabeth Olsen and is supposed to be her dad? And there's no even excellent, there's no establishment that even Magneto is her father at this point. But someone coming in, some villain coming in going, I am your father, that's pretty Luke Skywalker right there. Hmm. It's true. Um, but the, to answer your question, no. You can't cast Xavier, you can't cast Eric this early. Like I yeah. said, that's, that, that's when you get to your X-Men movie because that's going to be, because they're going to recast him because they don't, again, you don't, you want to clean cut certain things from from your from the other franchise. Right. And it just it works better for them to kind of build it themselves. It's, and they're too big a characters to do that with. You yeah. know. It's and the last couple mind. and the last couple films in that fan franchise did bomb. <sighs> uh, yeah, I saw them all. Yeah, I mean we look <laughs> at Days of Future Past and we look at uh the 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 first two. We we try to forget the third X-Men movie and then we try to forget Age of Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix. Oh, oh. Dark two Phoenix. swings at Dark Phoenix and two failures. They, and 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 New Mutants was just sad. Haven't watched it yet. I've got it on disc over here somewhere, but it, I haven't watched it yet. It, it's not horrible. It's just small. Hmm. That's the best way to put it. Okay, so if it isn't Magneto or, or that, my thought, and this is wild ass speculation, but this is the time for wild ass speculation. I'm thinking we will get Mephisto, and it's going to be a big name actor as Mephisto. And my guess is Al Pacino. There were Al Pacino had was in Al Pacino was in talks with Marvel a few years ago to play a role. And at the time, Mephisto was supposed to be part of the Guardians of the Galaxy, at where the whole Thanos thing. Because mm -hmm. in the comics, Thanos did the whole Infinity Gauntlet thing involved Mephisto as well. And then they wrote that character out. Who better to play the devil of the Marvel Universe than Al Pacino? Well, he was the devil in The Devil's Advocate. Yep. Exactly. And the very exactly. A very good devil. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, I, I would also, I, okay, I'm not saying yes or no to yours, but it would be interesting because you could also keep that very secret if they did it because they might just completely CG a Mephisto and all he has to do is voice work. Could be. Ooh. That, yep. that would be a way to hide that, that yeah. kind of surprise. Mm -hmm. But what, do you think that would be a Luke Skywalker level moment? To suddenly have Al Pacino in the Marvel Universe? I think it has to have a Luke Skywalker moment. I think it has to be a character we've seen already mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah. Somehow. All right. Because so most of the people, most people who watch the Marvel movies and TV shows have never read a single Marvel comic book. Right. So it's I just think. I think they need a connection. The character needs a connection to who have existed somewhere in a Marvel movie or before. Okay, so who well, could that be? That's Parker Stevenson's Spider-Man from the... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. 
Okay, so then if it's somebody from the MCU, you've got Tony Stark. That'd be a big one. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've got Chris Evans uh, coming back as Captain America, who's been in talks to play stuff. You've got maybe her actual brother showing up. Since we got the the the, the other one having it switched to actually her brother. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know who else in the MCU that we've already seen would fit that bill. Um, so I had a weird theory that came to mind because I think Iron Man, the Iron Man or Tony Stark does make a certain sense. Mm -hmm. But um, based off of her line from the end of, of Endgame where she's talking with Hawkeye and says, I just wish she'd know. They both know that we won that she brings back black widow if only temporarily yeah as the only as the other major death from the infinity war saga interesting that's i think that's a possible i don't know if it fits into the story true but it's but it would also be a good and the movie's coming out later yeah funny <laughs> Even though it was supposed to come out last year. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, there's a lot of possibilities there. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's also talk about Benedict Cumberbatch showing up as Doctor Strange, but I don't think that would be that same level. Yeah, because no. we, yeah. You, you have um, to have kind of one of the original Avenger types, it feels like, would be the important one. Yeah. Um, it could also be Hawkeye just because they have a certain uh, connection that they had set up a little bit with a. Uh, uh, Age of Ultron, and that when it, but I th I think them calling in a, an active Avenger would make sense, and mm -hmm. I don't think that would surprise anybody. I think this has to be, if it's going to be the Luke Skywalker level, it's got to be somebody they oh my they didn't. There's no way they could because that's mm -hmm. how we all. I mean, I'm assuming, yeah. but that's how we all felt watching. You know, <laughs> oh, we see the X wing. Oh, we see the gloved hand. <laughs> we see the green lightsaber. Ha! Ah! You know. That build up. Yeah. Oh, lost an ear. Okay. <laughs> Reasonable. Yeah. So I think it's got to be something big. But then, of course, you know, she may not have meant it that way when she was doing the interview. Yeah. Right. I, mm -hmm. I, I think we could, it could turn out to be Loki. And we just all, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I really don't think it's going to be Loki. Because but, that messes too much with their timeline stuff and and what looks like they're doing with the series on its own. But there's another interview with Paul Bettany who says that there is an actor he gets to work with at the end of the series that is somebody he's always wanted to work with. Hmm. Now, is this the same person? Hmm. Because Paul Bettany never had a scene with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, and it has nothing to do with what you just said, but what if they brought Ultron back? <sighs> okay, Ultron would be a great, yeah, Ultron could absolutely, maybe Ultron's the one doing all this. Yeah. Getting her to bring back the vision so he could possess the body. That, that would be interesting. James Spader popping up. But Vision has done scenes with James Spader, so it doesn't count that part. But it so if assuming that those those two quotes work together, then I'd say no on uh, Ultron. But just Ultron appearing, I think that's a possibility. Yeah. No. All right. Okay, and then I'm going to go into my wild ass theory that the Vision isn't the Vision. Um, too many things about the vision don't seem to add up. Uh, the fact that he can't add up the whole problem. He has struggling doing the math, figuring out the baby's, uh, birth when the baby will be born. The fact that, uh, he suddenly has super speed that he never had before. Uh -huh. Um, the fact that he's far more emotional now than he ever was. Also, the fact that he doesn't remember anything prior to Westview and that his body was in complete pieces. I'm starting to think that when Wanda saw 
the vision with the head missing. It was a traumatic thing. She That's not how he really looks. I think she turned around and just the last version of last time she saw him is what we saw. And then she shook it off and went back to the look he has. And we're actually seeing one of the townspeople cast as the vision. And I think it's Simon Williams. Hmm. I think it's Wonder Man. Right. You, and, you said that. Yeah. And you think it's you think it's Nathan, and do you think it'll be Nathan Fillion? I think it could be Nathan Fillion, or I think it could be Paul Bettany, because how did he come up with the look of the of him with the make uh, you know the the skies? Simon Williams is supposed to be an actor, so maybe he saw him on TV and decided that's the look I'm going to use. So it's a way to keep Paul Bettany in the universe just as a different character, or they absolutely could bring in Nathan Fillion. And that would be your Luke Skywalker level cameo. Hmm. But yeah, so I, I, it just, the powers that he's displaying seems to fit Simon Williams. He can turn into energy. So the phasing through a door, he could still do. He has super speed, but he doesn't have Quicksilver level super speed. So the fact that he ran across town to get the doctor and back, Quicksilver would have grabbed him and been back like that. It takes him some time, long enough for Geraldine to find out there's a baby, for the stork to come around to deliver the babies. So that's really not that fast, but he's fast enough to get across the room and catch a papaya. Yeah. So and he's the barbecue. Got, what? And the barbecue, where he barbecues. And the barbecue, or when he's doing the uh, the calculating at work. It's faster than normal human, but is it quicksilver speed? Mm-hmm. So I, that's why I'm, I'm leaning towards that. And then the whole bringing Norm out, it might be him just filling him with ionic energy and then pulling it back out to block Wanda's power and then remove the block. Interesting. Wild ass theory. I get it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just out there, but it it ties in. And then you've got the Grim Reaper's helmet in the second episode credits. And the Grim Reaper is Simon Williams' brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Simon Williams' origin involves him getting in trouble with the uh, the mob. Maybe Simon Williams is hiding in that town. He's the witness. Ooh. That's good. So this is me literally just pulling all these pieces together, trying to make this, you know. And again, I think it's a long shot, but, it's, it, you know, it. each week there just seems to be one little more thing that adds to it. And maybe I'm just as crazy as the people looking for Mephisto in every window reflection, but I, I'm getting the feeling that uh, we're going to meet Simon Williams by the end of this uh, this series, and that's who the vision is right now. Okay, let me ask you this. What would that be setting Simon Williams up for later in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, well, I think they have to re- repopulate the Avengers. There aren't that many Avengers left now. When you lose Cap and you lose uh, uh, Iron Man, you need some bigger Avengers again, more powerful Avengers. He's a pretty powerful Avenger. So I think he would become part of the Avenger thing. Interesting. Or would he be in another Guardians movie like he originally? James Gunn wants wants to have Nathan Fillion be Wonder Man so bad. I know, I know. And maybe he does end up as part of the Guardians. So that's another, you know, or part of S.W.O.R.D. Or, I mean, there's there's a lot of things you could do with him once you have him. But I, I, I kind of, I just think the pieces almost make the puzzle. I, I can see what you mean. Mm-hmm. Plus, it also gets rid of that creepy, she's boning a corpse. You know? <laughs> No, she's she's actually just making a guy have sex with her without his full knowledge. Well, we that, don't know. That, if that, that, that doesn't help. That doesn't help. It worked fine in Wonder Woman. <laughs> I I got nothing. I got nothing. All right. So, anybody else have any crazy ideas or theories no. or questions? 
I was actually gonna dip out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have I have no theories. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, I, I would only jump in the one quick one going for yours, Dan, just to make it extra creepy and bizarre and out of this world that they will do it as Wonder Man and it'll be Tom Cruise. I concur. <laughs> All right. And, and blow everyone's mind. There you go. All right. Well, it sounds like we probably should wrap it up at this point because <laughs> we are also two and a half hours. We're yeah. keeping it under three. Yep. <laughs> All right. I got, I got to get some time management skills here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to go over in this episode. There was, there was, there was. And, and we all had some good ideas. But all right, so we're going to wrap this up. Uh, let's go around the room real quick and uh, just get let everybody uh, remind us of where to find them. Uh, we'll start with Rosalinda. Alrighty, uh, my new website is up, so you can find me at rosalindadiaz.com. So take you know my name there, diaz.com. You good? Okay, I will fix that for next time. It's all good. Okay, Mr. Taylor. Uh, find me on Twitter, and you'll eventually find out what I'm working on. I've got a couple irons in the fire right now that are a little too early to talk about, but hopefully I'll be able to talk about them soonish. Very cool. Mr. Uh, Goggin. Mr. Goggin. Andrew Goggin. Um, you can f uh, find my writings and work at uh, Action Figure Times, www.aftimes.com. Or I'm on Twitter at, at Randy of AF Times. And I usually wander about saying strange things. So there it is. <laughs> yeah. I got them all up there. there. Nicely done. Thank you. All right. And myself, you can find me uh, on Dan Wickline One on YouTube. That's my Twitch handle, which is where this is broadcast. I'm also on all the social medias, just as my name, Dan Wickline. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, I'm everywhere. So, okay, we're going to wrap this up. I'm not sure if we'll be doing an episode next week, being it's Valentine's Day. Uh, I think Dan wants to stay married. Um, <laughs> but uh, if not, then we will be back the weekend after. I will let everybody know for sure. Okay. Um, and also who the guest will be at that point. Uh, Andrew, thank you for joining us this evening. Oh, thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun. Thanks, so. Yeah. And Dan, it's good to have you back. Try good to keep to from back. getting sick, man. So, all right. And then uh, remember, I'll be on uh, the uh, comic book experience or the, the comic book shop experience. That's such a clumsy name. Um, this Tuesday, talking about the new books shipping this week. Come on by. You can bug me there. Along with Nick Perucci, who had popped in earlier on the episode. Thank you, uh, Lennon. Uh, well, Bob Crochets is actually Tyler, Nick, and anyone else who jumped in and joined us. Gil, Kristen, thank you for listening, and we will see you all soon. Have a great week. Peace. Bye now.